Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. I have the privilege of doing the invocation and the pledge. So if all bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity as commissioners to represent these citizens and the entire county. We appreciate the ability to do what we feel is best for the county, and we pray that you guide us, direct us, and help us make those correct decisions. Please bless this meeting. We ask in Christ's name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have three items that we need to uh, move to amend the agenda. agenda. Uh, first is, and I'm very, very, very pleased to move that we uh, allow, amend the uh, agenda to allow the police academy and Chad Laws, who I see in the back, uh, to make a presentation. That would be number one. Number two and three, <coughs> Mr. Stevens, I think you have those. Uh, Closed sessions? That's correct. And I'll make those motions later on. But we'd move to uh, amend the agenda to add two closed sessions one for economic development, one for consulting with the board on litigation. All right. And that's my motion. Do I have a second? Second. In discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. I only see one name on the uh, public speakers. And that is Jamie McGritt. Is it McGirt? Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Is she in the other room, maybe? There's people in there. Do we have folks in the other room? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Pull over there. Okay, they have a phone number. Are they dialing in? No, they're not. All right. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have two proclamations. Um, <coughs> Mr. Carter is correct. Um, we had a no. We voted on that to amend the agenda. We voted on the amendment, so we don't need to vote on the agenda as amended. I don't think so. I, I, I thought that was the vote we just took. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, so mistaken. Okay, correct. Okay, we have two proclamations. Um, the first is Human Resource Professional Day, Cheryl Ray. I think we have a big. We think we have um, five individuals that are going to come up. What would you like? I'm sorry? The proclamation, are you reading or am I reading? Uh, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, and because I'm with Kane, and hopefully, uh, by the way, I'm now walking around inside my office and home and so forth without the cane in its entirety. 
So my ribs are, are improving and I'm getting much, much better. Uh, and physical therapy gave me their last hurrah today. So, <laughs> so that, that's all good. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to let you read it. Please, ma'am. I'm going to nominate Melinda Airy to read it. She all helped right. craft it. Would so you please come forward? Thank you. May I grab my reading glasses, please? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the grade is after the read. No. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for this honor of standing before you all tonight. So the Alamance County Board of Commissioners Proclamation, Human Resources Professionals Day 2023. Whereas human resources, HR professionals, provide critical services in both public and private organizations, agencies, and businesses throughout Alamance County, and whereas these professionals help employers and employees adapt to an ever-changing and competitive work environment while responding to workplace needs and economic challenges, and Whereas dedicated HR professionals from across Alamance County are committed to identifying and addressing the HR issues that affect the people of our county. And whereas Alamance County HR professionals strive to review and discuss with their local government representatives the HR issues facing Alamance County employers and employees. And whereas public recognition of human resources professionals underscores their role as a valuable service not only by making them more visible, but by lending assurance to all Alamance County employees that they will receive the support they need and deserve in all aspects of employment. And whereas the County of Alamance recognizes the importance of human resources professionals in our county and encourages people to learn more about the career opportunities available in human resources, now therefore be it resolved that we the Alamance County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim September 26th, 2023 as Human Resources Professionals Day in Alamance County. And we thank you. Thank Board, you. We have the vote for this resolution. I make the motion. Just one second. Second. My motion. Second. Oh, yeah. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just want to say thank you, thank you. You guys do such a remarkable job, and we appreciate it both countywide and with our professionals that are here in this room and serve us every, every day as well. We thank you. Thank you. It's All a right. privilege. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Madam Clerk, is this our copy or is that their copy? Their copy. Their copy. If you'll come back forward, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, my good friend and buddy, Chad Laws. I can say that, I think, because his dad talked me into coaching uh, soccer for 18, girls soccer, 18 seasons, girls softball for 10 consecutive years, uh, and uh, boys soccer and for less years and boys uh, baseball. So I think your dad's my friend. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, good you. evening, commissioners. Um, I believe our group's going to be making their way in from the overflow room. Uh, while they're coming in, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to showcase some recent graduates of our 2023 Junior Police Academy. Uh, Sergeant Justin Jolly with the Burlington Police Department, who's one of the coordinators of the academy, could not be here tonight uh, due to illness. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the program and more importantly, let you hear uh, directly from some of the graduates about their 
share own personal experiences. Um, so we'll start with a, a photo of our uh, 2023 JPA class. Um, I think we, uh, we have about 13 out of 27 graduates represented here tonight. Uh, not all of the graduates could be here due to sports practices and parents' work obligations and other family matters, but, uh, but we have a, a pretty good uh, showing uh, tonight from our, our recent class. So the Junior Police Academy program uh, is a youth crime prevention strategy. Uh, it was developed by the Burlington Police Department uh, back in 1996 uh, with the mission of providing uh, middle school adolescents social skills intended to make them more productive students and members of our community. So that's our goal. Uh, we're trying to help them uh, be good citizens in our community um, and lead successful lives. Uh, so our cadets undergo a very structured, very well-disciplined four-week training program. It happens during the month of July each summer. Um, you can kind of see there on the screen some of the focus of uh, a lot of the activities that we do in the academy, focusing on self-discipline, respect, responsibility, a lot of the basic character traits that one is going to need in order to uh, be a productive citizen in our community. So. We help them try to build up their self-esteem, work on anger and stress management, conflict resolution. So many of the things that they have trouble with, um, either in school or at home, we're trying to help them um, to deal with those problems and give them some skills and some other resources that they that are available to help them with those issues. Uh, we focus on decision making uh, and making good decisions, um, substance abuse prevention, dangers of social media and internet safety, which is a big thing these days. Uh, we want to make sure that they're safe online. And then we also have a focus on uh, community service, giving back to the community, and I'll bring that up uh, in just a moment as to why that is so important for our cadets. Um, again, I want to keep this brief just to talk just a little bit about the uh, selection process. Um, referrals for the academy come in a lot of different ways. We get them from school staff. Uh, ABSS is one of our partners in this program. Um, our SROs have uh, folks that they identify, students that they identify throughout the year. Parents contact us and even we have students that um, will go to the SRO and say, hey, I've heard about this program. I think I'm interested in it. Or they may have known someone who also has been involved with it uh, previously. Uh, the candidates must be a rising 7th, 8th, or ninth grader for the upcoming school year. So that typically puts our cadets anywhere from age 11 to 14 uh, while they're going through the program. Um, they have to be interviewed along with their parents by our staff to determine their interest in the program, whether they're going to be committed to it, and how cooperative you know, they and their family are going to be. Our JPA staff selects the cadets, and then the parents and, and the cadets have to sign a commitment contract sort of saying what they agree to in terms of going through the program, and they have to have a sports physical in order to participate in the academy. Um, how the academy works in terms of its operation. The first week, uh, some of you are well aware, we, we take them to the uh, North Carolina Justice Academy in Salemburg, North Carolina pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's not much uh, distraction there on that campus, and so it allows us the opportunity to get their full attention and get them focusing on themselves uh, and away from all the negative influences that they might have in their community here. So that's a great experience for them. Um, they get to room with other cadets and get to meet new people from other schools and just form that bond during that first week, uh, sweet first week of the academy. The other three weeks of the academy are conducted pretty much our home base is the um, Burlington Fire and Police Training Center, which is uh, located in, in Hall River. Um, the neat thing about this program is it is a countywide effort. Uh, we have several law enforcement agencies involved in the program. Like I said, the school system is a partner with it uh, as well because that's where we get a lot of our referrals from. Um, so we got obviously the Burlington Police Department serves as the administrative agency for the program and they oversee uh, all aspects of the program including the funding piece uh, and or financial piece. Uh, we've got Graham Police Department, Alamance County Sheriff's Office, as well as Mebane Police Department that are are all involved in the program. So that allows this program to serve all of the middle schools within Alamance County. So it truly is a, a countywide effort. Um, 
the community, uh, the, the, the program is largely funded upon community donations. So there's a lot of organizations, there's a lot of individuals and businesses that donate food for meals during the course of the academy, um, all kinds of other supplies, right down to the supplies that we'll need or the cadets will need to, for that first week in Salemburg. Um, so there's all kinds of different things that the community helps to provide to the program so that uh, uh, it can be operated each and every year. Uh, obviously, the, the personnel cost and transportation cost are funded by the agencies that are involved in the program. Um, so some of the things that we do, just, just quickly here, drill and ceremony. Some of you are well aware of what that is and you've seen that taking place. Uh, we do physical training to emphasize the importance of exercise and staying healthy. Um, all of this helps the cadets develop self-discipline and teamwork. Like I mentioned, they work on community service projects that gives them a chance to give back to the community who has so, you know, um, uh, help them as far as putting on this program and giving them what they need. We feel like it's important for them to also give back, uh, to, all, to totally understand the importance there of uh, that community support. So uh, we have a lot of community partnerships like the Burlington Sock Puppets, uh, Grandmaster Lee at, at uh, Lee Brothers Taekwondo. Um, all of those, you know, are, we have lots of different community partnerships which gives the cadets a chance to participate in special events throughout the academy and learn about some of the other available resources that we have here in our county. Um, so the four-week academy concludes with a formal graduation ceremony. I know several of the commissioners have attended that graduation ceremony, so you kind of see, have seen what that's like and uh, how proud the cadets are and their parents are, uh, which by the way, we have a lot of parent representation here as well from the cadets tonight or the graduates. And then during the course of the next school year, the cadets are mentored uh, by uh, officers at their schools and other JPA staff to kind of see how they're doing and try to keep them on track. And we get them back together and do group outings where they can, you know, participate to, with one another. Because a lot of them don't see one another. Like if one cadet goes to Hallfields and then another one goes to Western, they may not see one another really throughout the school year. So we feel like it's important to get them back together because they do form quite a bond uh, during that four-week program. Um, so uh, on the uh, county's website, um, can't get that to advance. Can you advance the slide for me there? Thank you. On the county's website, the video has been posted, the highlights video. It was also playing in the room here uh, as everyone entered. That's uh, the 2023 highlights video. Uh, that's something that, that the cadets always look forward to, and I would encourage anyone to please have a look at that video. If you want to see more about the activities that the cadets are involved in, um, it gives you a great overview of that, uh, and you can really see them participating you know, uh, in the different types of activities. And then the last slide um, is just a way to, if someone would like additional information about the program, uh, it's the uh, contact information for Sergeant Jolly at the Burlington Police Department. So, and I'm sure that'll be posted to the website, uh, this presentation, so that folks can get that information. So without further ado, I would like to uh, uh, have the cadets come up uh, one by one, and uh, they're gonna introduce themselves to you guys and then tell you something about the program that they enjoyed or that they really took away from the program and what benefited them. And then if you have any questions, I'm sure they would be glad to answer those as well. Uh, are there any questions for me before I turn it over to the cadets? Because that's what's most important. Just want to thank you for your dedication to this program. It's such a great opportunity for these individuals. Thank you. And I want to recognize some other folks that we have here that are staff members of the program. Uh, from the Sheriff's Office, we have uh, Deputy Jason Bennett, uh, Deputy Jake Peterson. We also have uh, Officer Michael Juarez from Burlington Police Department. And I don't know if there's any other officers that might be uh, in the background there, but uh, I want to thank them for being here to uh, represent uh, our agency and, and their agencies as well. Thank you, sir. And I'd like to also say uh, my wife taught for 42 years in the Alamance Barnton School System. Mr. Carter's wife taught for 27. 27 years. And both of our wives have reported to us, as we personally have seen as commissioners, the tremendous growth that you guys, and guys does not mean male or female. But I don't care whether you're male or female, all of you guys standing on the back row can gain in those four weeks. And my wife and I and Steve's wife and, and uh, Steve have all seen personally tremendous gains 
that you can gain through this program and have gained. And I'm just very, very appreciative to all the law enforcement agencies and everyone and you cadets. Thank you. Okay, so we'll have them come up one at a time. Uh, Zaire, you can start us off. And then did you want to get a photo afterward? If you don't mind. Okay, yeah, so um, we'll just have them go uh, well, we'll right, have roll, right along the front. Up here and we'll just stand behind you. Okay, all right. So after you finish, if you'll just go down the, the line. <clears throat> Um, my name is Zaire Wiley, and one thing that I liked from the JPA Academy was the physical training, because not only did it help me physically, it helped me mentally and build up my self-esteem. My name is Tyler Rice, and I like the um, physical training because it helped physically. Thank you. My name is Aiden Jones, and the best thing that I liked was probably uh, the physical training. Um, my name is Kate and Florence, and the, uh, probably the physical training. <laughs> <laughs> Before you speak, uh, if you will, starting on the far end, tell us which school you're from. Uh, I'm from Broadview, but now I go to Cummings. I'm from Turnstile, but now I go to Williams. Excellent. So great. Thank you. My name is Jalen Lewis, and the best thing I liked about JPA was the physical training, and it taught me a lot of discipline. Good. And which school? Virgin. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> My name is Chase Taylor, and I'm from Western Middle, and I like the physical training. <laughs> My name is Peyton Jones, and I like the physical training. My name is Peyton Jones, and I like the physical training. Which school? Turn Middle. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, at this point, you have to tell us which school. <laughs> My name is Brandon Sills, and the best part for me was the food. <laughs> I'm Anthony Mont Mont Montanino, and I, I liked how much um, I, I improved. I go to Alameda, not Alameda for Excellus Academy. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Skylar Thornton, and I'm Mostly like the uh, physical training, and I'm from Grand Middle School. Excellent. I'm going to ask you to move one shot to your left. Your left. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, my name is Tasha Dawkins. I come from Grand Middle, who got transferred to, is to, is to now going to Woodlawn. I like how it taught me re responsibility. Very good. My name is Abby Ramirez, and I really liked when we went to Salemburg. I really liked the rock climbing, and Salemburg taught me a lot. It was a week, really tough week. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Shayla Alice. What I liked about the JPA was that um, the drilling ceremony it taught me discipline and how to march. Very good. That's everyone. Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to request that the law enforcement come forward with these guys. And We're going to cheat. We're going to stay here. <laughs> okay, so photographs, we probably need to move everybody kind of over here. So, he's <laughs> coming right here. You're fired. Why don't we do it? 
know, guys, move in in front of these officers and we'll do two legs. <laughs> There you go. man on the front row, just tell him you think big. <laughs> Did someone take one for the county? I'll share it, Wes. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> much for doing this. It means a lot to have every aspect of law enforcement involved with these young people. And I want to thank the parents for allowing your children to go because it's not, you don't know what's going to happen down there. And it's, um, it's a big deal. And I guarantee you guys grew just as much as they did. Um, I just can't thank this problem. I just wish this was a curriculum in the school system for kids, for all kids, because it just builds them so much. And I'm just so thankful. So thank you, thank you guys. Let me make one more statement. Uh, as Mr. As Officer uh, Lieutenant Laws said earlier, uh, the video from the police academy will be on our site, and you can uh, connect from there. Uh, you can from the Burlington Police Department site as well. And it's about a half an hour uh, video, and it's really tremendous. <laughs> it's well worth. It's much better than anything you'll see uh, for a half an hour on TV. I assure you. So. And additionally, I understand, uh, Ms. York, that uh, Mr. Carter's provided a uh, picture of all 27 cadets. And if we could post that somewhere downstairs, then it'll be uh, available to the public for the next two or three weeks. Thank you. And again, thank you to the law enforcement uh, Sheriff Johnson, who backs this as well, uh, and to all the cadets. Tremendous learning experience. And the parents. Okay, consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Stevens, do you have a copy of the motion that's coming up next? Um, oh, Miss Short, do you have that? I think I have it. I'm not sure that the motion is is necessarily coming up. I think, I think the board wanted to hear what's being proposed first, and then I made those available in case there's any desire to follow up after that. I just want my copy that left in my office. <laughs> uh, I understand. Um, We'll, we'll try to get that to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I've got a copy over here, John. All right. Mr. Hook, I think you're next. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stevens, I've got it. Thank Thanks. You. Chairman, Mr. Paisley, Board of Commissioners, uh, I'm here to, tonight to 
uh, give you an update on our current roofing projects and also end that with a, a request to move forward with some more roofing projects. Uh, so the first one, I have a slide that uh, mentions the Woodlawn project. That project is essentially complete. Uh, we're doing some punch list items there and, and cleaning up, but that, that roof is on and it's in good shape and it's keeping the water out at Woodlawn. The next one, uh, Graham Middle School, uh, that design is complete. Uh, the uh, certificate of re review has been issued by uh, DPI. Uh, we've already advertised for bids and had our pre-bid meeting uh, at the site and we'll have a uh, bid opening hopefully on September 27th. The next one, Hall River, uh, we're wait awaiting our certificate of re review from DPI. Uh, the engineering company has to submit everything to DPI and resolve any questions from their engineers before we can move forward. Uh, as soon as that's done, we hope to advertise for bids uh, before September's over, do a pre-bid meeting uh, in oct early October, and then go out to bid uh, sometime uh, mid to late October. The next one, Graham High School roofing project. Uh, the engineers still have to go out on site and do some core sampling. That's where they cut into the roof to determine how many layers are the, in the roof, uh, what kind of layers are there, and what the decking is, is like beneath, uh, and also do some asbestos testing there. Then they'll submit their 90% um, complete uh, plans to DPI for review. And then I have some timelines here for uh, bidding, and we hope to get that uh, bidding complete in early November. The last one, Southern Alamance uh, High School, uh, it's the same uh, as the last one. They're still doing some on-site work there, the engineers uh, checking the uh, composition of the roofs, doing some asbestos testing, uh, and then they'll uh, do the final submission to DPI for the certificate of review, and we hope to get that one bid uh, in January. Uh, the next thing I have for you, um, I had mentioned to our uh, Board of Education and in uh, the OSC meeting um, ab about changing from requesting uh, what we would view as the full budget amount for roof projects or other projects and just moving forward requesting the amount uh, to put the projects in design. So that's what I have here for three more roof projects and these would have been on the what we were calling the, the unfunded list or the next top 10, uh, but there is water coming in all of these roofs currently. Uh, so I have the Western Middle Roofing Project. Uh, the cost to do the design work through contract documents is $108,855. B. Everett Jordan, uh, $52,500, and Western High Roofing Project, $140,625. The reason I specify design through contract documents, that amount does not include uh, the amount that we would want to, in the end, pay the uh, engineering firm to manage the project, to uh, host the bidding, and help us to do background checks on the bidders, but then also do weekly checks on the on all these projects as they as they go about. So what we'd like to do um, is request three hundred one thousand nine hundred eighty dollars to put each of these into design, um, and then uh, once the designs are complete, right now it's taken six to eight months to get things out of design. Once the designs are complete, uh, then we'd like to uh, work with the engineering company to get a more accurate budget price and then come back to the Board of Commissioners and the Board of Education to request funding uh, to support getting those out to bid. Can I ask you a question just yes, real quick? Um, all of these, like Western Middle BJ, Western Alamance High School, um, are those are those like patching or is that the whole thing done? because I know we kept patching and patching, Cummins and Broadview, the membranes were broken, we ended up having to do the whole thing, lawsuit, everything. Is that gonna be like this or is it gonna be a roof? Th these are roofs and I'll clarify what, what that means. Uh, for example, at Western Middle, there are uh, parts of the facility that have metal roof okay. or a reasonably new uh, flat roof on them. So this, uh, this is for the remainder of the roofs at Western Middle which I would just characterize as the old part of the building. So it won't be like 
here's the new one, and here's the old one, and we got this little line right here that no, could no, possibly ma fall through. No, ma'am. And okay. I, I have a picture if you'd okay. like to no, see it. I, what you tell me, I'm good. But it's it, the way they look at the roofs are sections, so you wouldn't join a section with a seam. Gotcha. Uh, but you might have a high section and a low section. Uh, an upstairs and a downstairs it could be considered separate sections but uh, for western middle it's it's everything that was the original part of the building that would all receive a new a new roof okay. um, for be Everett jordan it's everything that was the original part of the building that would receive a new roof okay. uh, and then for western high school there are some sections that have reasonably new roofs uh, the cafeteria has a brand new roof from the bond um, and then some of the tech areas right by the cafeteria have new roofs from from the bond and then the auditorium has uh, a reasonably new roof and the the small gym the auxiliary gym but all the other sections at western high school do not so this would include so the designing new parts all of those. are their own entities they're not lined up with like skip put on skip put on do you see what I'm, I'm just wanting to make sure the whole yes. thing is covered so there's no part in there that is going to leak well if we currently have something that's within the 20-year warranty we would not put it into this design unless we had some issues with with that roof and it currently we do not okay great anything else no i just hate leaks <laughs> okay mr turner <clears throat> a few questions mr hook first of all related to the the roofing projects that are that are going out to bid now those are funded right yes fully funded the first four I, i've showed are funded okay so is there any i mean i know that the different roofs are, are in different phases because there's some some work that you're, you're still doing on those. Is there any way to move those bids up? I mean, you know, we're looking at January for Southern Alamance. Is there is there a way to get that closer in line with, you know, mid-October or the November issue, just so we can get these things done a little quicker? Um, we could try. You can you can submit for a certificate of review from DPI right. and go ahead and put in into uh, put it out to bid. If the engineers at DPI were to find something that they really questioned, and normally they don't, yeah. but if they did, it could change uh, the design of the roof, and then you'd have to go back and change the bid documents. So that's kind of why you have to wait for the certificate of review. That would be best for everyone. But I just asked the, the engineering company the same thing. Can you go ahead and put them out to bid? And you can. We can, we can accelerate, but you can't begin construction until the, until the, the, the bids are... Uh, until the designs are complete and you have that certificate of review once you start you don't want to do something with that roof so you you could accelerate it somewhat i think i mean i think it makes sense that, that we try, try to accelerate yes, as much as we can um just to you know get these things moving they're funded they're out there the design is complete um so then moving to the other three roofs um so this is just a request for design is was the design a part of the roofs that are going up for bid in the next few months? Yes, when the, um, the funds were requested uh, from the school system for the, the four other roofs, yeah. uh, like Hall River, right. what was pushed into that was the amount for the design and for the management of the bidding and the management of the project and for the amount of uh, the construction of the new roof. So it was one lump sum. And I think what, what happened there is um, Dr. Thorpe had to come back and ask for more funding at different times because things were going up in price while things were being designed. So uh, what I'm trying to do is prevent uh, coming back multiple times. I know I have to come back at least one more time to ask for the amount you know, to put it out to bid, but I feel like that's a little bit safer, and it doesn't tie up capital as much as either. How is, how is the design different? I mean, I've heard some people say, you know, it's, 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 you can just get a roofing company to come out there and tell you what you need to do. I mean, and that that's, a, that's a much less expensive process so I mean are those are we talking about different things give, give me an idea of what what it is when you talk about roof design okay what does that mean well um, for example uh, the gram the gram middle roof uh, the this would be what we're calling phase two at gram middle yeah. uh, the phase one was funded a, a few years ago for phase two that include, includes the gym building and everything connected to the gym building and also the two-story building that's directly behind it which is some classrooms and the, and the arts and um, that kind of classrooms. So when you look at those buildings, uh, they have two two layers of roof on them already. And so what's required? Is what does that mean? Two, what does that mean? Two they have one roof and then another roof was put on top. And once you have that situation, then we're required uh, by code and DPI to take both layers off and go all the way down to the metal decking. 
So we have to go through that and take all that off. That uh, has to be designed because you want to make sure you put the right, right kind of roof back. And then the other piece I had on my slide was they have to do asbestos testing because you find quite frequently uh, asbestos was in everything years ago. And if that's the case, then they have to do asbestos abatement along with taking, taking the roof off. So uh, for, for example, on the ground middle roof, uh, it's a very complex roof. If you go up on ground metal's roof right now, even on sections that were done just a couple of years ago, uh, people call it pooling. You can stand over and, and look at the other roof, and it looks like little swimming pools all over the roof because the roof is uh, not quite flat, and that's not, not desirable. So in this particular roof at Grand Middle School, the way that it's been designed this time, they're going to take all the, uh, all the current roof off, go down to the decking, put a membrane down, and then they're going to put... They call it lightweight. It's basically a concrete cellulose mix and they spray it on. And then they put, it's engineered to have an insulation layer, like a foam, uh, foam pieces of insulation down in that lightweight. And then they spray more lightweight on and then they put a membrane on top. So engineered and designed all of that, plus all the corners when you get to the corners and how you would do uh, the, the edges, all that, the engineers have to dictate that. So if you just called someone and said, hey, come put a roof on there, it wouldn't work. All right. So, I mean, is it fair to say you're breaking these roof projects up into two phases, two necessary phases, phase one design, phase two implementation? Well, uh, no. Like at Graham Middle, I think they came back and asked for a limited amount of funds a few years ago to do two buildings, and then they came back for this prior to me coming to do these two buildings. Okay. Um, they could have several years ago said, let's do it all at one time and ask for the you know, larger amount which is what we're doing at like Western Middle. So, um, um, so the two phases would be we're doing different sections at different times. Okay, but within the, I guess within the phase that you're, that you're talking about now, you're talking about breaking that project up into one design, once that's done, then the implementation of whatever yes. that design yes. shows. Yeah, but that would all be one phase. And when, if, if this is approved tonight, when, when, do you, when do you get moving? I mean, is it a bid process for the design itself, or, or is that already lined up, or what is that? Look well, like? we have a, 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 bid, uh, a bid date uh, out there um, for the, the first four roofs because the, the funding is there for those. Right, but for the so, uh, you know, what, what we always like to do is uh, we'll put out the bid documents uh, so that folks can read about it, and then we have a pre-bid meeting, meeting. We had 15 different roofing companies out there uh, a week before last at Grand Middle. They went up on the roof to see what it looked like, to see what they were getting into, to decide but, if they wanted to But I guess bid. I'm talking about for the ones that's, that aren't yet funded, what's the timeline okay. for the, um, so getting the design out and start working on that? What we'd have to do, um, if you all approve this 301980, uh, is uh, we would draw up a contract with our engineering design company. I have to present that to the Board of Education. If they approve it, then that would get the design company started on these, these three roofs. And I would say six months, and they'd be coming out of design, hopefully. And then we'd go through the process of putting it out to bid and taking bids, which would be a month. So you'd be sitting about seven months. And then the back side of that, once someone is approved through the Board of Education, I have to come back and ask for the money here, the funding. But once they're approved, then they've got to start ordering materials. Now, the supply chain is not like it was, and they're telling us there's not a great delay in that. So, you know, I would think they'd be starting in seven or eight months. And these three roofs were ones that you had identified as being your, your prior, one of your priorities for this year's funding. Is that fair? That's right. On the, the first time I came here and presented, these would have been in the, the next group, the next group of ten. Yes. Meaning. Meaning this this fiscal year. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Is one of the component parts of a request for proposal a request for proposal from the engineers a, a request for the amount of time it's going to take them to do that? Are we taking a look at trying to match? One of my concerns is, is, is prices constantly going up on materials and workmanship. So the longer we take to get a proposal or get a design, that delays the amount of time before getting a bid which means our cost is going up to the citizens of Alamance County. Sometimes it seems to me it might make more sense to pay a little bit more to an engineering firm who will get it done quicker than taking 
one that maybe taking one that says it's going to take six to eight months. I mean, yes, sir. Um, I, I think um, everyone has plenty of work and they're all backed up and they're juggling multiple jobs. We do have to go through an RFQ process to choose an engineering design firm to meet the Mini Brooks Act so that we're hiring based on qualifications, not right. on price. And this, this company, this was before I came, but they, they were chosen through the RFQ process. Uh, so the, the best practice uh, that I've been advised on is you choose one, but some school systems may choose two, two firms uh, to engage with for just what you're saying. Are these schools that are where we've had problems? I know that um, I think Mr. Bass was, and his team was in here during the, the rainstorm about a week and a half ago, was uh, observing how many schools we had with water coming in through the roofs. Uh, are these three schools schools where that's part of the problem too? Um, Western Middle uh, consistently has water coming down uh, in the middle portion of the building that needs to be re-roofed. Um, we've got a pretty good patch on B. Everett Jordan that we just did pull out a bunch of carpet this summer um, that needed to be pulled out because it had been wet before uh, and the patch is not going to hold forever. So there was quite a bit coming in B. Everett Jordan before. A lot of times you get lucky and you get a, a good patch on and you think problem solved, but problem is not is not solved. And then Western High has lots of water coming in really all over. Having done a lot of financing for uh, construction industry, I know that you don't want multiple layers of a roof, but you can't, but the truss system typically can't support with so much weight. So if you add three, four layers, or more than two anyway, can get extremely heavy and cause problems uh, for the infrastructure. So I understand that, but it just bothers me that it's taking us that long to get something done. I'm, I'm glad to talk to the engineering company and see how, how they can push. So actually, I'm going to go next and I'll leave you last if you don't mind. Um, um, Mr. Turner, I want to thank you for spelling out with Mr. Hook what the draft and, and all this design work is about. When I replaced my roof at my law office here in Graham, I called three roofers, got three bids, and it was done. No designs, whatever. I now understand because you have different roofs, different layers, uh, and multiple layers, while the design is now necessary. And I really didn't understand that fully until today. Um, but I agree with the other folks, uh, Ms. Thompson, Mr. Turner, Mr. Carter. I'm just, uh, why it takes so long to get a design? Um, and I would encourage you to look at uh, well, particularly, there are some folks that we've talked to in preparation of our many hearings that we've had uh, to see, look at more than one design company, one more than one engineering company, and see if we can get some proposals both time-wise and bid-wise. But I encourage you to use the best as opposed to necessarily the quickest or the cheapest. Uh, North Carolina General Statutes encourage cheapest, but they also have proposals in those cheapest that it's got to be one that's qualified and can meet the needs. So you and Dr. Butler, I saw here somewhere just a minute ago, uh, you don't have to pick just the cheapest. I would encourage you to pick the best. Uh, and the time frame, seven months to even get bids. Just uh, a lot of mold, a lot of mildew, a lot of water in seven months. Yes. I would really encourage you to do it quicker. Mr. Lashley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hook, for being here tonight. Really do appreciate your presentation. I just want to ask you a particular question. Are you required by statutory laws to do this design process you speak of? Um, well, I think when we, I, I can't say for sure that we are. I think where we are is we want to make sure we have an engineer stamp on our construction projects so that we know we're doing the right thing uh, and that uh, 
it's a more of a liability issue. We want to make sure that we, it's been designed, and then as we bid it out, then the engineers are, are matching their work to the design. So then when we get the 20-year warranty, it's all tied together. Okay, because I was just, uh, Mr. Carter, when he asked that question about time frame, I'm just curious why the seven month, it takes seven months to do this. If you have the engineering firm there, I just, the seven months seems like an inordinate amount of time. And I just want to make sure that, that there's no statutory limitations here. Like you're going through the design phase because you think it's the most prudent way to go? Yes, sir. Have we ever done the school roofs without a design phase? I can't say. Because seven months when you have water coming in, yes, sir. we may be revisiting what we just came from, if that's the case. Uh, I do want to ask you a particular question about your request. R reading here, correct me if I'm wrong, it says you're going to use school capital reserve fund to school capital project fund, <clears throat> and this is the key part I want to focus on, to amend, <clears throat> excuse me, to amend the budget for roofing design fees. Uh, I guess my question to you is what are you amending? What Was, was there another request prior to this for these? No, I think that's just the way it was typed on the agenda. Yes. That is to amend our school's capital project Thank fund. You. Okay. Because we're just going to amend that. Okay. I'm good. Can I just say one more thing? It's it's a do, do, do you do you owe me? Okay. Do ask that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a chicken to me. Um, I just have a, a just a couple of things. Um, Elon, when we did Elon Elementary, we did public private partnership. Elon University, Samet, we did all that, and we really had a lot of help in the legislature down in Raleigh to do that. It saved us millions of dollars to build a school that way. This is. Um, this is like a major crisis. You know, we've had this hurricane without any wind. And um, is there any way that we can really utilize that help to get this done faster? Because like my partners are saying here, if we wait, we gotta do it right, but if we wait, we're just asking for the very same thing to happen because we're not even really healed yet. We're just now starting to get the scab on this. Satan. And so, um, so anybody, I just, I look at this and we just, we just cannot redo this again. I don't think the county can emotionally handle being out of school again. They can't. This is, this has been like a COVID hangover. I kid you not. And, and I hear all this. I just want to make sure that we're going to do whatever we can as fast. And the swimming pools on the roof in Grand Middle, how old is the roof with the swimming pools? that you were talking about, the little water stand and all that. That's the second roof on that, and how old is that roof? That that roof would have been uh, three to five years ago. Okay, was there any kind of warranty? Well, the warranty would cover leaks, and so going back to the design, uh, this time we're being careful to to make sure it's a level, a level design. We could have done a cheaper design, a, a more inexpensive design on this phase two at Grand Middle, uh, and not been concerned about uh, how level the complete roof is if we were willing to accept the ponding. But what I'm, what I'm saying, why is that our fault that the roof was put on and there's areas like that that we didn't ask for them to be that way? Well, we, I mean, this was in prior years, but we bought a membrane roof and put a membrane roof on this, this surface. But and you didn't put the roof on. The roofing company put the right. roof on. Yes, but that's that's, when you put that on and the engineering design doesn't dictate that you have to get all of that out, then then there is no warranty on, on the ponding. It's very common on our roofs. But, but ponding doesn't necessarily mean leaking. No, it doesn't. It's just you 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 don't want it. Right. But it can you lead have the to weight, it. Right. The weight. It can lead to it. Yeah. Did you say that roof was five years of age? I'm thinking three to five. It was prior to my three time. Three to five years of age. Yeah. And it's leaking. No, it's uh, ponding the other portion, phase phase one. It's warming up. So I, mm. I'm just, like everybody here, I just, um, we, we just cannot go through this again. And time is of the essence. 
And when I saw how we could build a school faster, working with Elon University to build it and have that public partner mm -hmm. problem, you know, it's, it's so much better. When you get DPI in there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that goes along with it. And um, I, I just think we got our own crisis here and whatever. We got to work like we're in the middle of a crisis because I think we still are because everybody's just waiting for something to break. And I don't want kids sitting in their classroom watching the water pull out. And I know it happens. It's just what it is. But, um, you know, time is crucial. I know you know this. Um, I, I would like to add more to my explanation of engineering do. because one of the things that we f we found at, at Woodlawn, the, the first one I showed you, um, the engineering design did not call for the replacement of the roof drains. When you get the roof off, you find out they're all rusted out, and that's probably where most of the water was coming from. So now when we do the engineering design, we're designing in the replacement of the roof drains because they're metal, and once the water gets in there and rusts, we just found one today at, a, at another school at Western, Western High where it wasn't the roof, it was the roof drain, but people have been up there putting patches on trying to patch something that didn't need patching. So when you have the engineers come out and do this design, it does stretch out the process, but you're getting a, a complete package. If you just go out and put a roof on, like if we had done that at Woodlawn, we'd have real problems. Then the other thing that I want to mention too, uh, that we're doing at Graham High, uh, Southern High, the, some of the first four I mentioned, and then at Western High, we are re-engineering the roofs where the span is not too wide. We're converting those to an A-frame metal roof so they will be timeless. But that does require engineering because we have to go up and take off the, the rooftop units, the heat and air, put them on the ground, but then design the right span and everything so it will be structurally sound, but then not overload the, the roof. Mr. Carter. Um, Western, the overflow that you're talking about into the drains was causing part of the problem with the water coming down behind the front entrance, I believe, wasn't it? Wasn't that where water was coming over the roof, which, which down through the drains, reference? and then down through the, between the front entrance steps, down into that basement area that we looked at when I was over there? Are, are you talking about Woodlawn or, or Western? Western. I mean, no, excuse me, Williams. Williams. Uh, yeah, Williams is another story. I mean, Williams' roof is really, really good. Uh, this, the, the basement or the first level is below grade, right. and the staircases can't take the, 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 the water that gets on the lower staircases, comes in through the, the, the doorways, uh, and then you have water coming through the, the, the crack steps. I mean, that's, but that's not a roof issue. So where are we as far as a redesign and re-engineering of that entrance area so we can keep that water from bleeding through that wall? Well, I mean, that would be an, another engineering story. You'd have to have a civil engineer, and it's more extensive than it, than it sounds. Oh, uh, I know. It, every staircase around Williams, uh, there, there are so many cracks around the stairs, and they've been caulked in years past, and even up, up the brick, brick line. But water is, when it lands on the steps, it seeps through the steps, and I don't think in 1949 mm -hmm. they put the same kind of waterproof, and if any, that we put now on homes. So um, there may be none, so the water that leaches through the steps, it leaches on through and, and, it, and it causes just what we saw. But I mean, my assumption is the water, it's not just pushing through and pushing minerals through the brick like we saw. It's also, there's some evaporative process in that basement right. that led to just the things that we saw. So I had an engineer out, uh, ironically, a couple of weeks ago to look at just that because I knew it was important. Um, and there are multiple ways to go about that. At Williams, I mean, the, the best way would be to take all the stairs off and to redo all the French drains, the drainage around, right. because we do have French drains. Water goes in, and then it goes right through uh, the wall, about three feet below grade, into the cafeteria at Williams. That's not doorways. That's wall and a French drain. But you'd want to take all the stairs off and then redo the waterproofing and the, and the drainage and then, and then re you know, redo all the stairs. There is a, a, a less expensive way, and that's where you ladders. would coat. Lots of ladders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you could coat, you could put a coating, um, but it wouldn't be timeless, a coating on the stairs, and it wouldn't be aesthetically sure. uh, the way it is now. It would change, change, change that building, but on the front and the back, there are staircases all many around. Of, you how many of those problem. entrances are there, that, those stair entrances? I, I really can't say, but I, I'd Another say, you know, um, upwards of 10. Go back to Western. Redid the roof three to five years ago, and now it's the metal drains that's causing the leakage, if I understood you correctly. 
No, oh. no, no, sir. I've, I've kind of bounced around topics. Uh, so uh, Woodlawn is the one we just finished redoing, and we had to go back and do change orders and things to put roof drains in that because it wasn't part of the design. When they took the layers off, they realized it, it was the roof drains. That was Why the problem. Why was it not seen initially three to five years ago? No, this was... That was grand metal. Yeah, that, what I was mentioning well, there. Confusing uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I mentioned Western High. We found a roof drain today that was leaking in a section that we were actually trying to patch. And then... Uh, so I am right. It was Western Middle with the draining... Yes, but that, that actually is an old roof, though. That roof is probably over 20 years old. They just happened to find a roof drain there. So I've bounced around three or four different schools. So we have that effect on people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have one question. Go ahead. You're talking about Western High School. I'm just curious by why the, why the things that we're working on Western High School right now isn't included in the bond project, because that's one of the schools that was supplied by your ABSS when this bond was being uh, introduced to the public. And I see <clears throat> roof replacement or repairs where needed. Why doesn't this apply? Well, I, I can't say how that decision was made. I think it was three years ago. $12.4 uh, million. Dollars. But uh, it's, it is needed. But, the, um, but that's, but so in essence, you're telling me that when the ABSS actually told the public that this was going to be for roof and replacements or repairs, that that may not be the case. And my assumption is they didn't think they had enough in the budget budget to do that. I think the roofing design, of the, the actual cost for the roof at Western High is going to end up being around $5 million. That's the, the amount we requested for Southern High and for Graham High. So I think Western High would be essentially the same. So my, my gut feel is they didn't think they had enough in the budget to do that. They did the, the cafeteria and the tech, the tech building uh, as part of the bond, but not any of the rest of it. So um, am I free to say that the humidity controls and HVAC upgrades aren't, weren't needed as well? Um, well, they are needed there. Absolutely um, they are. The, the new section of the building, I know it got new, new equipment. I don't know exactly what other equipment was put there, but the, the areas that, uh, that need to be redone uh, need to be redone soon. Lord, I'm going to make a suggestion. Uh, there is so much confusion here. We can't keep A straight from B to C to whatever. We're confusing schools, roofs, HVAC. I think we need a lot of information that we simply do not have at this point. I'm going to make a motion uh, that we direct the county staff to issue and vet an RFQ under Article 3D of Chapter 143 of the North Carolina General Statutes for a vendor or vendors to, uh, to evaluate the need for repair or replacement of roof and HVAC equipment for all buildings owned by the Alamance Burlington School System. I further move that we use the fund balance to pay for these expenses. That will give us the information that we need. We can expedite. I personally have talked to folks from the state. I've talked to folks uh, out of Guilford County, Orange Counties, and so forth. And they're um, of the opinion we need to do exactly what this motion would require and gives us the county the ability to bring in our own engineers or experts so we can evaluate what is needed and take an action upon it much quicker than seven months from today. That's my motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. Did you just do that motion off the top of your head? <laughs> I, I absolutely read it right off the top of my head. <laughs> We got that I might have been prepared. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a motion second. Any further discussion on the motion? So before you go, what time, what kind of time are we talking here? We are directing the county to expedite this. What does expedite mean? Quicker than seven months. Okay. So it's two different things, just to clarify. I think the motion is to do an assessment, an engineering assessment of all facilities. What Mr. Hook is asking for is the design of three specific roofs, which is comes after an that, assessment. That's not before us yet. We have not made a motion as to that, his uh, 301,000. I'm, I'm clear on that. I just want to make sure we know that the time frame we're talking about is for two different 
things. Because yeah. that needs to get done, the 300 and something. Right. The so. assessment does not, is separate from design work on these three rooms. But if we hire our own firm and get precise information back to us as county commissioners, not filtered through other groups or boards or anything else, then we have the information firsthand and can take action upon it as necessary in cooperation with the school board. Can I just ask one more thing? Sorry. Has this been discussed with the school board? Have we had any conversation with Dr. Butler or his team? Have Because I know all this is we got to be real strong partners on this. I think that's been a history we haven't been on the same table at the same time. I think that's crucial. And I'm just wondering, has, is this the first time Dr. Hook is hearing about this, your motion? Or is this, this is already, what I'm trying to say is, are we like, surprise, are we doing that now? Or were they aware of this? Or are we going to be working collaboratively with them? Because I know we've got a big interest in this to where we want to know exactly what's going on. I'll be glad to answer the question. Well, if I, as soon as I quit talking, <laughs> you can, Mr. Paisley, so go right ahead. No, go ahead. I'll wait. I'm, not, I'm not disturbing you. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Are you I'm good. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, the first answer as to uh, Dr. Butler, uh, I have not discussed this with him. I didn't know whether I was going to make this motion uh, tonight, but I was prepared in the event that you came before us making requests for design for whatever, and we still don't know where we are and what the real needs are, and it's going to be seven months out. That's what caused me to make this motion. And have I talked to uh, Mr. Hook or Dr. Uh, Butler about this prior to tonight? Absolutely not. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, uh, well, there is an alternative motion right beneath that too, John, that was proposed where we would be looking at our own problems with the county at the same time. I think that's a mistake at this point. We're looking at millions of dollars. We're not talking about a I few dollars. I think we're looking at millions of dollars there too. Well, Mr. Carter, I can actually fill you in a little bit. Uh, when Mr. Haygood was here, we took a tour around Alamance County buildings. And I took the opportunity to talk to the gentleman who's head of the county maintenance department. And I asked him to go and take a look at all my buildings that we were responsible for and to give me an update. I said, you can take a week or two to get that to me. He did come back to me in seven days. And he told me that the county buildings were looking at roofs and HVAC because we had just got a little tinge of the mental health department, $1.7 million for HVAC. Well, seeing how expensive that was, I directed him to go and take a look at our buildings and, and just give me a once over, get a once over on it and to get back to me and tell me which buildings are in dire straits and which buildings are not. Took him seven days to go through all our county buildings. And the gentleman came back and said, Mr. Lashley, you don't have to worry about any of your county buildings for a minimum of five years. The roofs are good, very good and even extrapolated it out that almost 65% of our buildings are well with over 10 years before we would have to do roof projects. So just to let you know, the county buildings are taken care of, and I'll give, just give you an example. Look at the Environmental Health Services building that had a, had a hole in the director's office. The first day that I heard about that, I went there to take a look at it to make sure that, first of all, that, it would, that the, the building was safe, that was the same time in which they were doing renovations. During that time, not only did we fix the hole in the roof, it cost us $90,000, it was done in, inside of a month, and the roof was put on. A new, brand new roof was put on because I asked the, the, the man to give me a call when that occurred because I wanted to check it out myself, just to see the process and procedure. So just to answer your question, as far as county buildings are concerned, I am completely confident we don't have these problems. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify. Uh, one, 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 one thing is that uh, <laughs> after we vote on this, I, I do, I do intend. I, I don't think this motion should cover what Mr. Hook is asking for. So I. No, I think they're separate. I agree. As long as they're separate, then that's, then that's. Yeah. So you, your motion is, as I understand it, to for the county to hire at the county's expense, 
an engineer to evaluate roofs, HVACs. Um, you didn't. You didn't state windows. I did not. Um, of the of every ABSS school and evaluate its status and report back with dispatch. Is that I did not include windows in my motion. Are you asking that I amend the motion? Well, I'm interested in Mr. Hook's opinion about whether windows should be part of the evaluation if, we're, if the obje objective, as I understand it, would be to um, prevent water intrusion in, a, in the buildings. Mm -hmm. Can I make a couple of comments? Sure. sure. So, um, uh, number one, um, uh, a few weeks ago I presented to our Board of Education the notion of a capital improvement plan around roofs, um, which is, I think is exactly what, what you're speaking to, and I, th I think that's a great way to go. And then in uh, OSC, uh, we, we brought this uh, up, and uh, Ms. York had mentioned in the county she was in prior, the county did this uh, for county buildings and school buildings which I think is, is a very good idea because it puts us together uh, and collaborating and talking. Um, what I'm really interested in that the, the engineer um, checking everything, whether it's HVAC or roofs uh, and windows, uh, is that it evolve into a capital improvement plan, what needs to be done in year one and year two and year three, and then making sure we continually revisit that so that we, we all know, and it does away with surprises, but we know, and the county knows, and the people know what needs to be done. And the, and the engineer, what I've been told uh, time after time since I've been in this job is uh, an engineer rarely makes a mistake. They're rarely wrong. So we put our trust in the engineer to drive two different capital improvement plans, HVAC and roofs. And I think that's, that's good. And it, and it solves windows. a lot of problems and gre greases the wheels, so to and speak. And windows? Well, I think the windows are important. And I've spoke about windows to this board and to uh, the Board of Education. And in the joint meeting, um, what we have, we still have a lot of single pane windows. And so when you put uh, a good HVAC system in and you have single pane windows, <laughs> you, you have heat on the outside and cold on the inside and they're sweating and you're making mold. So you're, making, you're making humidity. Let's well, look it, at windows. Yeah, so I think windows is important. <laughs> I mean, you could do windows. You, any of us could go out and look at windows and determine are these good windows or bad windows. You could use an architect to do that. I think in all these cases for windows, HVAC, and roofs, you need an inventory. You need how old it is, what kind of problems you're having with it, uh, and that determines when to replace. But I think doing windows in conjunction with HVAC is is, is pretty pretty important because it it solves some problems and it helps you to retain what you're what you're actually putting in. And, and then the other thing, some of the windows we have, you mentioned turretine, yeah. we can't get parts for those windows. So when they break, we actually, some of them we have to screw, screw them closed because you just can't get parts. And it's not just turretine. There's quite a few schools that still have the single pane windows. Well, the reason I included roofs and HVAC, those are the, to me, the most immediate concerns. Uh, we can throw in all kinds of things, but I think those are the two things that we need information on today. Quick question for Mr. York, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, do, do we have a sense of how long it would take to, to receive, to approve a bid on an engineer to do this work? That's the first question. And the second question is, is there any rough idea of cost? Um, the statutes would dictate the length of time that we would have to have an RFQ available for um, engineering firms to submit bids. I think it's 21 days. I think we can get it out this week, but it'll be open for three weeks. It requires to be available for about three weeks before we can open bids and, and figure out who. Mm -hmm. Would we be in a position perhaps to make a decision uh, by this board on funding at their second October meeting? Um, we will tight. try. It's going to be tight. We just don't want to lose time. We understand that this is a priority and we'll move expeditiously with this process. We won't sit on it by any means. So. Could I make one more comment regarding that? One, one more thing with a minute. Yeah, is is the, there any, um, I mean, does staff have a, a thoughts on including the county or, or not including the county in, in this effort? Um, I, I mean, like the idea of, of trying to get us to a place where we're able to make some decisions based on data supplied by an engineer. 
Um, the engineer would, you know, boots on the ground, walk all the roofs, view the seams, all of that. So it seems like we'd have some solid data to make decisions on. Um, we hope that there'd be some economies of scale by including all buildings, you know, at one time. But is, the is preference it? of the board is not to include county buildings at this time. Then we'll we proceed with more. just the schools. Is it possible to get? Um, well, we could we could also delay a decision on the county and move forward on the schools, and then have sure. a little bit more information about the schools, which could inform the decision about the county. Okay. Okay. But the economy that she's talking about, uh, I I would be willing to amend my motion uh, if the county manager is requesting. Uh, to make it school system and the county hall, county buildings. That's that one right there. Yeah, that's the only do. That would be the recommendation of staff. Yes. All right. Then I'll amend my motion. Who made the second? I did. That's fine. Are you I got. To? I have one last question for All Mr. Right. Are Hall. you willing to amend? Certainly. That that's fine. If, if staff is in agreement, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, well, I just wanted to um, switching gears here. You know, Mr. I don't really have to tell you this because you probably see it quicker than I do. But I think you're starting to see one particular item that comes in. It's like, you know, this seven months, it's going to cost us a lot of money. When I say a lot of money, I've sat in this seat long enough to realize that we get things in front of us that you want to do, and then we you know, like five months later, we get requested for more money to do the same project. I think what we're trying to do is, is we would like to be able to be a contractor, since you're familiar with those folks, and contract out some of your work. That's, that's how, that's my vision, is because if we were the contractors and we were picking the folks to come do these assessments and we would actually have a little bit tighter grip on how much these things cost us. And what's happening is, is six or seven months down the road, these costs are getting away from us. Our taxpayers can't make money fast enough to pay for the <laughs> overruns and the cost of these things. So that's why I want, and, and Mr. Turner, uh, Mr. Turner brought this up as well. The time factor is what's getting us. Waiting seven months for a design fee and then we all have heard the same exact phrase that comes after that. Well, inflation, supply chain, and this and that and whatnot, and therefore the cost that we initially had in our hands was two and a half million for a southern high roof is now requested a year later another two and a half million. It's so, so incredibly difficult to get your hands around it and to be able to manage the cost of these projects. Because like I said, the cost go up faster than my taxpayers can pay the bill. And that's what we're trying to keep from doing again. Because history has a tendency to repeat itself. It's just a different rhythm. So that's what I'm trying to, and, and just to say to you tonight, is what we're concerned about. And we don't, we're not concerned about fixing these things. What we're concerned about is being able to control the cost and have some, a little bit of an inkling of how much it's going to cost. Because I think everybody in here who they wouldn't put up with this for their own house if someone tells them it's going to cost a hundred bucks to fix it and then once the, the fix is done well, that'll be two hundred dollars i think that's why people are having a, a a hard time wrapping their hands around the request because we realize that in the past these requests have always come back and it's costing more money so what we're trying to do that six or seven months not only in a building that's you know needs repair, six or seven months, you know, the only saving grace you have is you're going into the winter time. So you at least you won't have to worry about mold. Let me add one more thing to that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be shocked if I vote for another increase or funding of a contract that's open ended, has no top base, has no cap at all. That to me is I've only practiced law this October will complete 50 years. I've never told a client that was purchasing, entering a contract, and we're talking about million dollar, multi-million dollar buildings, 
with no cap on it. I just, that absolutely astounds me that the school system would enter a contract. You've got a floor maybe, but you don't have a ceiling. I just, it just astounds me that you would enter a contract with no ceiling. Sorry. Okay, board, are we ready to take a vote on this motion? Hmm. You've already talked me right out of another question, but uh, <laughs> I can only keep them in my head so long, I yeah. think. Uh, <laughs> Chairman, Mr. Paisley, uh, I wanted to make one, one more comment, if I may, regarding the, uh, uh, the RFQ. Uh, what we found uh, when we do an RFQ for HVAC is we've been doing it for MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Uh, there's a, we found a, with uh, what's, what we've been doing and with the ESSER projects, there's a lot of electrical that goes with it, the switch gears uh, and different electrical components that we have that exist now will not run the, new, the newer equipment. So I would just say I would put, I would put that together uh, with the, the RFQ, so it was MEP. And then the other thing that I'm interested in, um, it, it looks like over time the information that I can pull together, uh, we've done inventories of our boilers and chillers, but we haven't done inventories uh, and capability studies of what's between the vent and the ceiling and the, the boiler or chiller at the other end and all of the components and what they can actually do, the dehumidification or other other aspects that they can do. And I think that's very important in the, in the study. Do you have to work with DPI on all of this? Are they a, are they a part of this, like approval from them? Well, yes and no. We don't work directly with them. We have to submit plans and so the engineering companies will submit on our behalf um, for all the projects and then so the DPI engineers whether it's mechanical electrical which, whichever one they will judge all aspects of the project and their engineers will write back to uh, uh, the engineers who are doing the design work for clarification or recommendations to change the design before it's before it's too late and before construction starts. Yeah, so they're really engaging with, with the engineers. Okay, thank you. All right, Warren. We have a motion pending. I have amended my initial motion to add and the county. Uh, Mr. Lashley has amended his approval and has approved the amended motion. Do I need sure. to read it one last time? Did we include windows? We did not. Let's get this thing going. And well, we that's don't part of it. Part of the issue, windows. Well, the existing motion in circuit is HVAC and roofs for the uh, county school system and the county. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And we look forward to working with you. Now we have to. Now, Mr. Chairman, before Mr. Hook leaves, there was the matter of the. Uh, of the roof design. No, I was not excusing him. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> no. Uh, I was just saying thank you for the first motion. I see. Okay. Now, uh, board, we have uh, Mr. Hook's request for $301,980 for design work on three schools. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? The only discussion I'd like to make is uh, we could postpone this at least to our, one of our October meetings to see what our folks have told us. And we'll have a lot more information and a lot quicker. And we would have saved potentially $301,000. That's not a lot to some members. But $300,000 to me is a lot of taxpayer money. Um, so I'm just saying let's be careful with this design. And should our engineers be working with their folks before they do design work? Just out of curiosity, what are you going to do about all the water coming out of the ceilings at Western High School while this is waiting? Well, we'll continue to patch. We'll continue to find... Uh, Roof drains, if we're lucky, uh, and continue to, to move on, change ceiling tiles uh, as necessary. I mean, it's been that way for quite a while. So I'm not saying more water's coming in than was coming in last month or six months ago. 
Um, it's just coming in. Okay. We have a motion and a second, Mr. Porter. I did check with uh, with our with with Mr. Stevens regarding the use of ABSS capital reserve funds for their portion of the engineering study. So, if we're going to do an engineering study independent of them and we are not going to approve this engineering study, then we ought to reimburse part of our cost from the funds available from their capital reserves. So. The 301000 for this piece. Ms. York. The request from Mr. Hook for the design work of 301000 is from their capital reserve. Yes. Right. The engineering study is going to exceed what they have in capital reserve. Sure. And a study is not typically paid from a capital reserve fund. Yeah. So we were recommending the use of county fund balance to fund the engineering study. It okay. would be the study that we would have, you know, it would be our study for all of the facilities. So we'd need a budget amendment for that then? Eventually. Okay. okay. I withdraw my request. So we're going to pay for something that we are requesting? Okay. Yes. That's what I re was recommending. Quick, quickly, my view on this, Mr. Chairman, is um, that the three hundred one nine hundred eighty dollars is, is not wasted by doing uh, uh, the engineering study that we, that the county would do. This is a design of a roof that must be done regardless, as part of the process to fix the roof. So if mm -hmm. we if we delay to make it part of the county's engineering study, it just moves everything back needlessly while we have water coming in schools. And, and to me, the common sense thing is we've got. We've got to act now. We've got to act quickly to make this happen as quickly as possible, and, and now's the time to do it. Uh, I would state that the motion didn't didn't have a source of the funds, and so would just uh, wonder if you meant that that would come out of the capital reserves as it was requested. Well, their request is from capital reserves. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Any other discussion about this motion? Well, I'm just going to say this. Um, <laughs> Regardless, if you if, if we pass this tonight, this thing's this not going to be be done past seven months, and if my math is correctly, that's like next April. Yeah. If now is September nine, yeah. So, Mr. Turner, I'm just going to say this is not going to be done like that. Right. I can understand you wanting to give them this money. I can understand that, but just to let everyone know, hope everyone's understandable here. It's going to be seven months before you get the design phase done. So. I tend to agree with you, Mr. Turner, that they have to they have to get the design fees because they can't do it any other way. And I wish it was not that way, uh, but I don't see any other way around it. I just hope we don't. I mean, I'm taking very good notes, so I'm just keep an eye on these. Make sure I'm gonna keep an eye on these projects. And I may be calling you up to go take a look at them in the future. Sure, anytime. Thank you. Any other discussion, Mr. Carter? No. All right. Um, we have a motion pending. We have a second. All in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. You have three to two, two no's. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got a, re a request for a 10 minute recess. We'll be back in 10 minutes, guys. Yeah, We're him. back in order. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dr. Butler. Where You're you not going? Dr. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, I'm not. Mr. <laughs> Chairman, um, County Commissioners. My name is, state your name and your position. Yes, we sir. Know, but. I am. Um, my name is Lowell Rogers. I'm the Deputy Superintendent for Alamance Burlington School System. I do uh, want to share an apology from Dr. Butler. He had to leave urgently. Um, he, he was ill um, and uh, needed didn't feel like he could make it through the presentation. And so to, um, to keep you from having to go through that, he left. And um, I take that as good that he trusts me to, to make our way through uh, this next item. Um, let, me, let me state where our thoughts and prayers are with him and with your chairman, Sandy uh, Graves, yes, uh, who just had surgery. Yes, she did. I talked to her on Friday and doing very, very well, so she told me. 
uh, and I'm Lever. So, and several of your board members are present, and we'd like to acknowledge that. Thank yes. you. Yes. And she's watching this evening, she said, from the, from the couch. But thank you for that very much. Um, so I will try and do my best to make my way through this and answer questions that you may have uh, with the assistance of Mr. Hood. He'll be back up. Um, as of today, 32 ABSS schools have been remediated due to mold. All of our school buildings are open at this time. That's the good, that's the good news. Uh, full test result, results have been posted on our website for the pub, public to see. I would like to thank this Board of Commissioners for approving the reallocation of funds to make this cleaning process happen quickly. As of today, almost $20 million have been reallocated for mold remediation. This presentation aims to answer the questions posed to ABSS two weeks ago. How will you make sure that mold will not return to our schools? My staff has devised a preventative plan that will be shared tonight. We will focus on the following areas, HVAC, roofs, dehumidification, water intrusion, windows, and staffing. And of course, this presentation was made before um, the, uh, the motion was approved this evening. Thank you for that as well. This prevention plan is not an official financial request. This is simply a scenario that provides optimal mold prevention and upkeep of our facilities. Mr. Hook will lead us through uh, these areas. Also with us are four employees from our operations divisions. I ask them to intend, attend in case there are specific questions that only those on the front lines will be able to answer. And they are Mr. Jimmy Simmons, our Director of Facilities and Maintenance. Uh, Mr. Steve Williams, our Assistant. Did you have them hold oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And I believe they haven't made it back then since their, right. the recess, but I'm sure they'll be back in. Uh, Mr. Steve Williams, sorry about that, uh, our, assistants, uh, our assistant maintenance director, uh, William Carter, our HVAC controls technician, and Lauren Williams, our plumbing foreman. Mr. Hook, if you'll come forward and take us through our presentation, please. Chairman, Mr. Paisley, uh, Board of Commissioners. Um, this presentation, like Mr. Rogers said, was created before your, uh, your motion to uh, do a uh, capital improvement plan around HVAC and roofs. I appreciate that plan, and I think it's the, the right way to go. Uh, it's mentioned in this presentation, and I thought we'd be on our own. But uh, <laughs> like I had uh, said uh, in the previous meeting, um, this is a good opportunity for us to rise to our goals instead of falling to our habits, and I think the capital improvement plans will help us to, to break a habit. That's good. So uh, I'll just bounce through this presentation and uh, go from there. So uh, the, the areas of need, uh, Mr. Rogers had mentioned these areas, HVAC roofs, dehumidification, water intrusion, windows, and staffing, uh, several of which were mentioned uh, in the last uh, few minutes. Um, tonight. So around HVAC, um, we, we uh, currently uh, are understaffed. Uh, I've mentioned to uh, both boards uh, in recent weeks, uh, we have four staff members who work uh, on, on HVAC. Um, and we struggle to get around. Uh, we're not able to do preventative maintenance. Uh, they're, they're running all day, every day, and um, frequently working weekends and into the night. So this is important. Uh, so uh, like Mr. Rogers said, a lot of these things are uh, ideas. This is a, not a financial ask. We were asked what, what could be done to prevent uh, getting back in the same situation again. So these are ideas around that. Um, so we're requesting uh, contracted services. We already use contracted services. I had made a note of uh, how much we had actually used uh, around contracted services in the past. Uh, and, and it's really just not, not enough, but this comes out of our, our local budget. Uh, last year, for HVAC repair, uh, we used $135,000 in contracted services. Now, that ex excludes $120,000 that was used for, to pay a company to put a boiler in. I took that out, uh, or sorry, a chiller. I took that out because I, I viewed that as separate. That was a capital replacement that was done out of PAYGO. But if you just looked at the contracted services that we used to supplement our HVAC 
technicians on staff, we spent roughly $135,000, uh, and um, we still left a lot of a lot of things not working uh, and in misrepair. And so when I came in March, uh, we had a long list of things that were just frankly not working uh, around HVAC, and we started working uh, July 1 when we got new funding. Um, so. Um, the, um, the next item I have on here uh, is exactly what your motion was, contracting with the engineer and design firm to do inventory, uh, evaluate our systems, and do a capital improvement plan. And I mentioned on the tail end of that conversation, I was really concerned about everything between the vent in the classroom and the chiller in the yard or the boiler uh, under the building. And so this last point about dehumidification system, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So when the capital improvement plan is done, it's fully evaluating everything including the capabilities, what what will it do other than just providing hot and cold air? So I think that's important because that, I mean, dehumidifying is going to be part of our um, combating uh, the, re the return of mold. The next item I have here is roofs. Uh, we're understaffed to provide preventive maintenance. We have no one that does preventive maintenance on roofs. Uh, and um, we just we don't do preventative maintenance so some of the things around that just going up on the roof and cleaning off debris uh, we don't have enough staff to to get that done um, at least not in a timely manner cleaning out gutters it's common that you'll go by a school and you can you'll see a plant growing in a gutter um, so when we we see that we'll get uh, our ground staff to go out but we don't staff anyone for preventative maintenance so uh, one of the things that we think would be important is to have funding uh, to do preventative maintenance. I think I mentioned in the meeting last time I was here that I found that Alamance Community College does just that. They contract uh, with a, uh, an outside vendor to do preventative maintenance on the roofs. So they would not just get off, get the debris off the roof, but they would inspect seams, joints, uh, all parts of the roof. They would do some sealing if they saw it was necessary, caulking, that kind of thing, but also spot things before they got bad so that we could do some preemptive work uh, to to preserve preserve our roofs, so I think that's important. Uh, I did get a cost, just a ballpark budget price from one of the companies that we use, um, and they uh, told me twice a year at all of our sites for one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. So that's just a rough ballpark, and that's putting people on the roofs in the fall and in the spring, which would be important times to make sure you get the garbage off. Right. When I say that, I mean leaves and debris. It typically, when I've gone on roofs with our staff to look at HVAC units in the corners you'll see lots of stuff piled up that's just blown up and off of trees and that kind of thing. So I think that's important. The next thing I have here is exactly what the motion was. It was to do a capital improvement plan. So I'm going to skip that part. But again, I think that was a very good, uh, a very good decision. Um, the other item I have here is dehumid dehumidification. And uh, here I'm not speaking about the equipment being installed to do the dehumidification, but these would be uh, more of temporary dehumidification. Uh, renting or purchasing dehumidifiers to put in schools as as needed. Uh, I'd mentioned in the meeting um, the last time I was here is we're not able in all of our classrooms and all of our hallways and all of our schools to read what what's the humidity in this building. And I think that's important. We need that. But then when we see something's not quite right, we have two things that we need to do. We need to get our HVAC tech out there to investigate why is the humidity high here and can we do anything. Frankly, we have lots of buildings that the humidity goes up in, but we have no response because the systems that are in place will not dehumidify. And just making it colder doesn't get the moisture out of the air. It just makes cold, cold moisture. So that's one of the problems we have. That would go back to the capital improvement plan. But the other thing that we can do if we have... Um, a fleet of dehumidifiers or uh, access to rental dehumidifiers, then we could put them into places where we know in the summer, and I'm thinking from June on through uh, to this time of year, then we could put uh, portable dehumidifiers in the schools to, to prevent uh, humidity until HVAC upgrades can be made. So um, I've got on the list here that ABSS is planning to use the million dollars in ESSER funding. That's what uh, the boards have both spoken about in, in various meetings uh, doing a, a de another application for that uh, $1 million that uh, I think we've viewed it as flex money in the uh, um, the uh, fresh air projects and over in the uh, the loss of learning area. But I think the boards have spoken about it enough that, that uh, and the determination has been made that that money can be used for 
dehumidification. And you're buying them? Well, we haven't made any decisions around buying or renting. Okay. I think all, all options are on the okay. table. Okay. Uh, the million dollar number up there, how, uh, it, it looks like you're planning to use ABSS funding for the million dollars. Yes, sir. Is that, uh, I'm, you're renting them, uh, for how long? Next two months? Is it is a well, uh, hundred thousand a month? It's, uh, it's funny what you Google when you're trying to learn about humidity. <laughs> and so I know that uh, humidity starts to tail off uh, in October as we get through October, um, and then the least humid month we have is April. Uh, so and then it starts to tick back up, and that's why I said earlier June would be the time that we would want to look to put some back in into the schools. Um, you know the number that you actually need. Uh, we have lots of them in the school following the cleanup, but I think that we could probably do better with the number that are actually in the buildings if we do some things like putting them in the halls, having teachers leave their doors open when they leave so that the, the, the ones that we do put in the halls will pull from all areas of the building and be strategic about where, where we put them and the numbers that we actually need so that we don't over overspend or over purchase. So back to the question, are we renting or, or, or purchasing? Uh, we could rent through a service contract, which is the quick and easy way to do it. If we do a purchase, then we'd have to follow uh, state purchasing uh, procedures to, to, to make a purchase. Maybe so you check to find out what the purchase cost would be. Um, I'll say roughly two thousand to four thousand dollars, depending on which which type you buy. Um, and so the other piece that that we would do, if whether we bought or rented, is we've talked to our uh, our maintenance department. Some of the battle that we've had here recently is they, they drain into giant trash cans and then we have to have staff go and dump the cans. But as we've been looking, we can do things with our plumbing department uh, to, to uh, pipe the water away and get it, get it out of the building. If we thought this was gonna be something that we're gonna be doing after uh, this October, that's what we would start to do. So we'd have systems in place that would get the water out of the, uh, out of the building without using staff labor. Mr. Chairman, uh, quick question, Mr. Rook. The, uh, there are eight schools now where HVAC improvements are underway. Yes. That's the $26 million in federal funding that we've talked about. Yes. As I understand it, the, the timeline, the contractual timeline to complete that scope of work is mid-September 2024. Yes, sir. Uh, is it not possible to, to try to get the HVAC portion of that scope of work complete by Memorial Day such that you don't need dehumidifiers in those schools where you've got new HVACs going in. Is it possible to talk to the contractor about either accelerating the timeline in a change order or just is it possible for them to, to, do, to focus on the, on the HVAC completion itself to have that complete so you don't need to, so you, essentially by next summer, you've got new HVACs? Yes. Well, I can talk to them. Uh, lots of the equipment that's coming in, uh, some of them are getting chillers, some boilers, different kinds of units are coming in. It looked like it was all coming in around February, and then installation would go on, uh, and, then, and then through the summer. I can't say what, what all parts will not be here, but I'm glad to speak to them about it, accelerating those, those projects. And I think um, th those are important. Not, the ESSER projects do not do complete buildings in all cases. And they, they really were designed for fresh air, not for dehumidifying. So they all will have some, some ability to improve conditions, but are they optimal for dehumidifying? No, no, they're not in all cases. Some are, some are not. So, uh, but uh, we do need to see what we can do to accelerate getting them in. Back to Ms. Thompson's question about purchase versus leasing, do you have numbers on these two options? I have some rough numbers. Uh, so uh, I have rental prices between $890 and $2,400 per unit per, per month. Per month. Per unit per month, um, which is, is very expensive. Um, and then I have uh, um, a rough number of about $2,500 to, to purchase. To so purchase. three months you could afford to purchase it? Well... I mean, it's certainly something we'd want to look at. And, I, and if we had them and we're going to have to redeploy them after the first year your payback's done, I think that's what you're saying, right? right. So, uh, I mean, that, that's certainly something that the district should, should look at. And 
just going back to the Esser projects, you know, they they were like two years in into design and then a year to get them done or a year and a half, essentially three year projects. Um, so having a deployment of portable dehumidifiers is is going to be a, a, a long term gig for us. But actually, you're actually coming into an air time. You know, just you said like October, so you're coming into a time where you're not going to have a large amount of humidity, and it may save you some money and give you an opportunity to go out there in the marketplace and see what you can pick up. Yes, sir. So you do have this time. You have time on your hands. <laughs> Mr. Hook, do you have a guy that can fix yeah. the dehumidifier if it breaks? <laughs> I, I haven't investigated that. So I don't know what kind of warranty comes. You know what comes, I'm saying? Do I don't know what kind of guy. warranty comes with them, okay. but it's cer certainly something that Everything that, that we would explore. Okay. If we're in a rental agreement, we're probably covered, but I would assume that there's some sort of warranty that comes with a with purchase. Okay. Mr. you said you were, you were good. I apologize for interrupting your... Oh, no, uh, that's all. Thank you. Um... I had a, a, a contact that I was talking to about uh, HVAC systems, and there's he was going to try and come tonight and make a, pre a presentation during our public speaking session. wasn't able to make it, but he did send me some material on several different processes that will use ultraviolet light and other sources to clean air in the, as it goes through the air handling systems. And I think that's something we might want to look at as well because we might understand some of what they can ins use in the air handling system can also help to kill mold spores. So I'm going to forward what he sent. He sent it, but he didn't. He isn't here to present it. So I'll forward that to you guys and and to our staff and to my fellow commissioners. Okay. Um, so. Um I have on here the permanent solution is the HVAC uh, capital improvement plan, which is already in process now. Um, the next slide is on water intrusion. Um, I mean, this takes uh, uh, place in different ways. We spoke earlier about Williams, where water is coming in through the uh, the, the walls and the stairs, where uh, we have a level below grade. Typically, that's the situation that I see. I had made a note. Uh, I've seen it at AO Elementary where the library is below grade and it's had damage in the past. Uh, we, we've done some grading work there and seem to have control of that. Definitely building below grade is not is not a good idea, but we have several sites that you go to and you'll see um, areas that are below grade. That's areas we need to make sure we're keeping an eye on. There's another area at AO Elementary where the, the water goes down the hill and there are pine trees and the needles fall off the trees and it stops off the drain and then the water goes under the door because it can't get down the drain. So some of it's simple stuff and other stuff probably not so simple, like the, the Williams example. We do have some windows uh, in the district here and there that, that leak water. Those are things that we want to want to look at. So where we are now with that, just as an aside, is we've really talked to our school administrators. Anything relating to water, make sure you stay on top of it, turn it a work order, and then stay on top of that work order to make sure we, we get it fixed uh, in a timely manner so we can deal with water before it becomes mold. So uh, I just have some um, things on here like grading, structural, and windows. Um, here's a slide about windows. Um, we'd spoken about that earlier. It was not part of the, the earlier motion, uh, but we do have lots of obsolete inventory that we cannot cannot repair in single pane. So my recommendation there is to contract with an, an architectural firm just to inventory the windows and determine what we need. But that is something we could also do our, ourselves in-house in just to know where we need to do window replacements. This slide is about internal staffing. Um, so... Um, one question. I think that I don't, I, do y'all have any of your ARP funds available any longer? Or is it all spent? Because some of ARP funds can be used for windows as well, right? You mean ERSA? ERSA funds. funds? You mean ERSA funds? ERSA, right, excuse me. Yeah, they're all, they're all committed except for the million that I referenced earlier towards potential uh, rental or purchase of dehumidifiers. But we do have in the ESSER projects at the eight schools uh, that uh, Commissioner Turner had mentioned window projects as, as part of those. So uh, at AO Elementary, where they have single panes in the 200s right. wing, we're replacing those. At turn time, we can only afford the ones on the front. At Williams, on the front. So it depends on which school you go to and the combination of things they were able to 
to put in there, but those funds will be exhausted and they're all locked up in the contract. So for internal staffing, one of the things we used to have uh, years ago when we had ABSS custodial staff, we had someone who was called the building manager. And uh, lots of folks here may remember a person that the principal or the teachers would call by name, uh, and that was the building manager. So uh, this is something that we'd like to discuss putting back. Uh, there's a cost to staffing all the schools with a building manager, but this would be a person who could be supplemental to our maintenance staff where we're really struggling to hire uh, HVAC, carpenters, plumbers, and elect electrical uh, folks. The, the, the building manager uh, would be able to do things like change ceiling tiles or to, uh, if there's a, a sink leaking or something like that, try to address that before uh, it moves to the maintenance department, but also be aware of things. So typically um, in years past when I worked at Southern Middle School, we had a building manager. And the first thing when I would come in, they would tell me which rooms are hot, which rooms are cold, where the lights need to be worked on, different things. They would come in and unlock the doors and survey the building. That was part part of their job. And then throughout the day, they were the person who was on call first to, to take a look at that. That would have to be supplemental to the MFM contract cleaning staff. We'd want to be careful that we didn't mingle this person with the cleaning staff because then they would have cleaning duties, not uh, building management type, type duties, which are important. So this is part of the, the situation we're dealing with now where you have a wet ceiling tile and you put a work order in uh, for a maintenance department to come out and change one or 10 tiles uh, from a leak or something that's happened. Um, they're backed up and they're all over the county, but if we had the building manager, then they would be able to take care of that. But again, there is a, there is a cost to that. Let me slow I, you down just a little bit. Yes, sir. And this is, I'm gonna tell you how old I am. Uh, had all the schools when I was in school, in one through 12, had what we call janitors. And that was really your building maintenance person, I suppose. Yes, sir. Title not nearly as fancy, but I would think the same type job. Um, how are you handling cleaning and maintenance and so forth now? Well, when we went to the uh, contract cleaning, we began to write a cleaning contract, which is just what it says, a cleaning so contract. Outsourced that, that job. We've outsourced that. We have maybe 18 or 19 ABSS custodial staff remaining from years past when we had a complete, uh, completely ABSS employed custodial staff. Um, but uh, now we have more or less fully contract cleaning. And so the cleaning contract is cleaning. It's not sealing tiles fixing a leaking sink uh, or things that you might think would come up on a campus because the cleaning contract is around cleaning. So putting a building manager in place to absorb some of the other functions we Who see could be- funds in. those type operations? The old janitor was funded by, I thought, the state back in the day. This would be from our local funds. The operations department is fully funded, and this would be an operations type you get job. Any funding for cleaning, maintenance, and things of that sort from somewhere other than the county? No. Not at all. No, sir. So uh, I've got some other items that, that this uh, person might do. I have uh, assist with health department and fire inspections. We've talked about this in recent weeks. We want the principals to walk with the health inspectors and the fire inspectors, but this person would be able to get ahead of the game. They know what to look for. They know what needs to be fixed to keep it off that list that we've talked about in here. It's on the list time and time again. Or if something's uh, blocking a fire panel and we know that the fire marshal looks for that, then the building manager would look for that. So we think that would be an integral part for them. Uh, cleaning and monitoring the HVAC system. I, I mentioned earlier, a building manager that I worked with years ago, if I came in, he'd tell me the heat's not, if it's January, the heat's not working in room 302. I mean, so immediately we'd get that um, in progress with the maintenance department. They would pick up on things ahead of time. Um, and then I have on here changing HVAC filters, which we struggle with, with our crew of four HVAC technicians and more or less 40 sites. Uh, you can imagine the situation we're in when we drop back to change filters, we're not fixing all the breakdowns. So we're, we're in a quandary. Uh, and then changing ceiling tiles. The other item I have on here for internal staffing, um, yes, sir. In the process of cleaning the buildings, I saw some pictures of some of the filters. They were pretty nasty. 
Now, this means nobody had cleaned them. It didn't look like in some cases. Is that – are we able to actually identify where we have filters and where they need to be cleaned? It's interesting you said that because I was in a conversation earlier today around, uh, you know, knowing where they all are. And we're in a situation now, uh, uh, Mr. Carter, where we have some who, that are overhead in the air handling units. We have some that are overhead in the classrooms. We have some that are inside of doors on the walls. You can imagine. And so when uh, you're down to four people and they're maybe not familiar with where they are and they're sent out to change them, they're likely to miss, they're likely to miss some. But in the computer age, surely you've got somewhere in a program where these filters are, how many locations, um, uh, I don't understand why they would miss them in this day and age. We do order them, and they come in on a truck all at one time, so we know exactly what to order. Um, I'm just saying that I think we're likely to miss some, and I don't think we have what you're speaking to. I think the, the HVAC tech staff we have, they, you know, they historically have known where they are, uh, but as they retire and we get down to four people, we, we are struggling. Um, so I also have on here um, uh, adding back an assistant maintenance director. We used to have two maintenance directors, uh, but uh, not long ago when we made some cuts, we had one maintenance assistant maintenance director who retired, uh, and we didn't feel that, and we're 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 feeling that feeling that now. Um, so I have some items on here for uh, what that position might do. Uh, monitoring inspection reports, whether they're health inspection reports <coughs> or uh, a health department or fire marshal, someone following up behind the principals to make sure that the work's getting done from the maintenance department because a lot of those reports result in work orders. But then the other thing is focusing on managing service contracts. And when I say that, it's not just HVAC repair service contracts or roofing uh, repair service contracts, which those are both very important, but we, uh, we contract all the mowing service out. Uh, we contract uh, our uh, <coughs> inspection of our uh, septic systems at our rural schools. We contract out the uh, service of our, uh, our, our wells and the treatment of our wells. And I could go on and on with the list of kind of things that we have service contracts for in place, like even cleaning uh, hoods and grease traps for cafeterias. So uh, we have no one really tied to following up with all the service contracts, ensuring that the work is done, and then also um, collaborating with the folks doing the service contracts to, <coughs> to discuss the work. You need checklists. Get your car in to have it worked on. They go down a checklist. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, so I have um, a, a page on here for external staffing and support. Um, so desired service contracts, we don't do any preventative maintenance on our HVAC systems, uh, probably other than changing the filters. Um, so uh, I talked to uh, a firm about that just to kind of get a ballpark price on uh, what that might would cost. My page is mixed up here. Um, <coughs> We think uh, it would take uh, uh, roughly $250,000 to $300,000 a year to do preventative maintenance on all of our boilers and chillers. We have about 50 chillers and about 75 boilers in the school system, and they receive no preventative maintenance. So that's one of the areas that we work on. That does not include uh, the fan coils, the rooftop units, and all the things in between the vent and the boilers and chillers. But if we were doing service contracts on those things, hopefully we could extend the lifetime of some of those, of those things and catch some potential breakdowns on the front end before it's, before it's too late. Um, roofing preventative maintenance uh, and on-call repairs. Uh, we do not do anything with roofing preventative maintenance. Um, so I had a price, uh, just a, a, a figure, I think I'd mentioned this, uh, $125,000 for two, two visits for preventative maintenance per year per, per site. So we think that's that's important as well. We already engage with uh, two roofing companies. That we sort of split the district for on-call roof repairs. We don't have any roofers that work for the maintenance department. So when we have a roof leak, um, principals will call that into the maintenance department and put a work order in. 
but then the maintenance department will put a work order in with one of the two roofing companies, and then they will visit the school uh, and try to find the leak and try to patch. One of the things I think that's important is having that assistant maintenance director to be able to be tied to the service contract to go up on the roof with the, the roofing contractors to go through their due diligence together. I think that's important, and that's a piece we're missing. I brought up earlier today at Western, uh, Western High School, uh, our, uh, our maintenance director actually joined the roofing company up there because they've been trying to track a roof leak uh, over the library forever. Uh, and he found it was a roof drain. And so they're going to fix the roof drain, but he's the one that got them to it. And I think that collaboration piece and tracking uh, where's the water coming from uh, allows us to tie to them a little bit better to make sure the correct work gets done. Uh, so what's ironic, when you go up on that roof, you can see lots of patches in the, in the same place where, where the water was coming mm -hmm. from, but the, the roof drain was right there. Uh, so I think that's, that was a win for us today. Um, so the other item I have here, the dehumidification, and we've already spoken about the rental uh, of those things. I think the important piece with those is not just the rental, but the monitoring and the maintenance piece with, uh, with those during the time that we need to use them. Bruce, I thought I had one more slide. Okay, I think this died. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, so I just put some summary cost information here. I think a lot of this uh, now in the last hour is obsolete because of the uh, motions that were made earlier with the capital improvement plan being driven by the county for HVAC and roofing. But I had some uh, costs here and you may find them helpful. I had talked to uh, the company that we do our engineering design work with for roofs. And when I spoke to them about doing the inventory uh, and the, the age and finding all the problems with our roof and then making the capital improvement plan, um, they, they suggested between 200,000 and, I'm sorry, that was the HVAC. Roofs was between 250 and $300,000 for that capital improvement plan. Um, so um, that's the number there. Uh, I've talked with the HVAC um, uh, engineering firm about the same thing, a capital improvement plan. Um, and I think they probably undershot these numbers some when you really think about all the, the rooftop units and the boilers and chillers and all the things that are overhead that you can't see. Uh, the, the, the company I talked to suggested between 200000 and 250000 for developing a capital improvement plan around, around HVAC. So those numbers, um, um, I guess you'll find, you'll find those. We'll find um, so um, I've got some suggested numbers here for replacement. Uh, of HVAC equipment, and this is just a ballpark number. If you were to take eight schools per year and say we're going to tackle eight schools per year, I'm just estimating it would take $30 million a year. So that maybe that's too much to take on, but I thought I'd bring that, bring that number here. Uh, the rationale for that is I think we have uh, eight or so projects on the unfunded list, and that's, that's what that is. Um, the number of schools that we have that we can't control humidity in is a lot higher, obviously but you can't take them all on at one time. So I think somehow chunking that, but the capital improvement plan would drive that as well. So uh, that, that information probably is obsolete here in the last hour as well. And then the same for roofing. I estimated if we were gonna take on four roofs a year, this is outside of the four roofs that we have in process. And then the, the three roofs that you all agreed to fund the designing on tonight, if we were gonna try to get ahead uh, and do roofing, just based on, on age and the capital improvement plan that's developed so that, that we get ahead of them before they leak. I'm just estimating if you wanted to do three or four a year, it might take you $15 million. That might be a low number. Uh, so then the staffing figures, when I reference building managers, if we were to put 41 in, uh, we think it would cost us $2.1 million to fund those positions. Uh, and if we were to put an assistant uh, maintenance director in, to manage service contracts and follow up with inspection reports and that kind of thing, we think it would cost us $94,000. Do you guys still do the rotation of painting the schools? Like, was it five or six years, so many? Well, it was on the, it was on the PAYGO plan, not, not any this year, but in future years. And so uh, the way I had put it on there was to tackle hallways, 
before we go back and tackle classrooms because you can go longer with classrooms, but you want to kind of keep the hallways in, in good shape. So that might have to be pushed back a little bit. I know that, that was so important. <coughs> that could really make a difference when you're a teacher walking into a brand new painted school. I mean, even, no matter how old the school is, it matters that somebody cares enough to paint that building and it looks a whole lot better. Kids take a lot of pride in that. I remember when we did grand middle, kids were going, don't touch the wall. Keep your pencils away from the wall. <laughs> Maybe it was like 15 minutes. I'll take 15 minutes. But it, it, it really has an effect on the environment. I, ha I hate to hear that because I know Dr. Harrison was real big into doing that rotation. I mean, every little bit helps. This is a whole different ball game. but I, I was curious about the painting of the schools. Thank yes, you. Uh, I can summarize by saying that uh, um, you know the current thing we can do right now is the de dehumidification, whether it's through rental or purchasing getting to the time when we can turn the heat on and we don't have to worry about the humidity in the schools and then continuing to develop that plan on out into, uh, into next year to be able to tackle that uh, in a timely manner. Um, the, the other uh, piece that uh, I think is important is the staffing, whether we talk about the building managers or the assistant maintenance director to, to pick up in those areas that I mentioned. The, uh, the roofing and the HVAC is very important but the capital improvement plan will have to drive that, so that really would come off of uh, what, I, what I'm pushing for. Okay. What got us to where we are staffing-wise right now? I mean, did, were we relying on contractors to do, to do work for us, and so we weren't replacing people as they retired or left? Or is it just that hard to find people to do these jobs? It's that hard to find people to do those jobs. So we... Uh, we would post a job, and this was prior to my time coming, but it's, it's happened since I've been here. In fact, we had a roofing foreman posted um, for over a year. No applicants. So we just took that down as one of the, uh, the closed-out positions to, to cut, make some cuts. Uh, but uh, we have a, uh, an HVAC foreman who retired uh, uh, over two months ago. No applicants. So um, electrician, we're, we're, we have three electricians. Uh, we need more, but there there are no applicants. What is the salary range for an HVAC foreman? I'll have to defer to Mr. Rogers for that. I'd, I'd, I'd hate to give you an estimate on that. It, it is so when you look at the market we're in, um, it is more and more appealing to go um, outside of a, of a school district position in that in, when you have that type of skill set. So it's usually the immediate, um, what we've been able to hold our hat on, I'm putting my HR hat on right now, but what we've been able to really push out there has been the benefits and that's been pulled back slowly uh, from school districts. I mean, I work with the community college, I'm on that board of trustees and I see what, what, what we're able to put, what kind of jobs we're able to put people who come through our HVAC training system into and they're looking at seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. that they can earn so I mean not these that are high. the kind of issues we're dealing with obviously yes sir um, if we don't if, if they can make more in private industry than they can in the schools some young people coming out of a program are not looking for retirement funds they are not they are not and in the past, we've been able to attract uh, more veteran, more experienced, um, like HVAC, I'll use right. that for an example, um, that are probably wanting to, to find something with more of a benefit package. Right. Um, that's been lacking in, in years. And I'm speaking more of a statewide um, in school districts. It's been lacking being able to make that, get that attraction from, from qualified candidates. Because we benefit from that right. when they have more experience. Mr. Rogers, uh, our maintenance directors here, if they want to. And our, our our guests, our four four from our maintenance department, are here. If you Beg have pardon? any specific, well, are the the guest I mentioned earlier during my opening, um, they are here. If you have okay. any specific get, uh, questions for them, Mr. Knight, just a couple of thoughts. Um, I'm trying to piece this together. Um, th this request is a, is an order of magnitude above the capital presentation in April that, that ABS has provided to the, to the commissioners. Um, the, what you presented in April, there were, there were eight roofs on there on request through 2026. There were only three roofs. Um, I think the total for the HVACs was 15.6 million over that 
over that full time. This is bigger. I, I understand we've gone through something which makes us look at things again, but my, my point, and also I have, I have a question about the, the staffing. I'm wondering if, have we, have we been funding staff that has essentially lapsed salary, or have we not been funding staff and cut that out of the ABSS budget? I just don't know. Well, what this tells me, is, I mean, this, this plan has not been voted on by your board. No, sir. And this is just really a point of discussion. We were asked to bring yeah. a future forward focused. Right. So I, I think, you know, something of this, something that changes the status of, with this uh, amount of, of change, we, we really have to follow the, the processes that we have. It's, it's got to be, it's got to be done through your board. It's got to come to the oversight committee. Staff have to, has to, uh, county staff, ABSS staff has to, has to work together um, to come up with with something reasonable. Uh, I think that what we've put in place today uh, or tonight uh, maybe assist with this, but but you know I, there's I have a lot of questions that it's just too it's too much to get into tonight. But but we really need to work through that process um, before we you know start putting these kind of numbers out there. I understand. Thank you. Additionally, what I really asked Dr. Butler for was. How are you going to prevent this mold and mildew problem from reoccurring? Mm -hmm. And I've heard all kinds of suggestions about we need this and we need that and whatever. But who made the decisions to cut off the HVAC in high temperature areas, times, and cut off the dehumidification? And what are you going to do to correct that problem? Well, I think we were, what Dr. Butler had us work on was looking, again, looking ahead to try and prevent to make sure we keep our schools open. Um, you know, that's the business we're in, is to make sure our students are, are ed educated. And we, if there's anything we've learned, as Ms. Thompson said, it, it's, it's that our students need to be in our buildings. You know, that's, that's where the good work happens, and that's what we need to make sure. And saying that, you know, you mentioned the HVAC being turned off. You know, that's been corrected. That's moving forward. That, that HVAC staying staying on as we go through the, the year. Um, and I think Mr. Hook shared that previously. Um, and then that dehumidification process or process that's within our HVAC, being able to evaluate that and see what our needs are across the district, which this board is, is assisting us with um, or taking that, which we appreciate that, um, so we can continue to work together on that. So that's a really big first step with that. Um, but then, you know, I'll, I'll use for an example the building managers just because I looked down and saw it first. You know, having folks that are in the building that can take care of more of the, the smaller maintenance issues and we can utilize our, our maintenance staff at the district level that um, can help when larger situations occur so we can more focus their skill set. But then we have those building managers in place to take uh, take care of the ready, um, the immediate needs or the more of the housekeeping needs of, you know, cleaning vents or changing filters and that sort of thing. So. I, I understand what your your question is. I do, um, but I think it does all tie together to make sure this doesn't happen, or we do the best we can to make sure it doesn't happen again. We use the money that you're currently using for outsourcing maintenance, janitorial services, call them whatever you like. Yes, sir. For now, hiring people is that where well, you're headed? Well, no, we've we've run a cost estimate and looking at um, recently, our board had asked about several months ago on what's more cost effective, continue the contract cleaning or hiring in-house custodians, and it, it was still more cost effective to bring in the contract cleaners. So, but it's not working. I mean, you can bring out, you can outsource it, but if it doesn't work and wind up with mold and mildew, then it's not a good idea. But it, it's not really the same. That They are cleaning. They're, that's truly a cleaning crew, not a maintenance crew to be able to fix things. So that's, they're still operating within their their contract, if you will. So it's too different. Didn't work. My point. Okay. Can I? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. <laughs> Whatever you choose. <laughs> well, Mr. mine's Arthur. brief. I just want on the on the eleventh. I happened to visit a number of schools, as I know some other commissioners did as well, and um, I went to one school in particular and found out. When I, when, I, when I drove up, I was a little shocked, first of all, because the doors were wide open. 
to the school. And I'm thinking, if the HVAC's on, why are the doors open? Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out the HVAC had been off all night. The school was hot. The teachers were opening doors and windows after we'd had three inches of rain the weekend before to try and cool the building down. That was cool that morning, but of course what's happening is you're sucking in humidity while at the same right. time there were a ton of humidifi dehumidifiers running. Right. So I, I didn't try to get in the middle of it, but I did mention to the principal that it might be a good idea to close it up and let the HVAC system try to do the job, but try to catch I up. know it wasn't probably comfortable, but uh, we just don't need to have HVAC <laughs> systems going off. Uh, I don't know what caused that. It could have been electricity. It could have been uh, who knows. But yes, sir. Would the board of, um, allow me, um, what do you say, a privilege, whatever, to ask Mr. Bass to step forward because he's on the front lines of all this and he's been in the buildings. I went to every school, but I stayed in the office. I didn't go further. But I would like to hear from who's the new molds are. If he would um, <laughs> tell us uh, kind of like a, a sense of reality of where we are now and what we possibly are looking at. So so just real real quick synopsis. And actually, I actually have some pictures if y'all want to see. I actually have, if y'all want to see these. I this would. Is, yeah. I would. I don't know who I'd give them to. I mean, I have, Please. do I need extra? I learned from... Somebody said I better bring an extra one or two if I think. I have one in my briefcase if somebody needs it. But anyway, so while that's coming up, I, I want to kind of walk you through this, and I think it'll kind of help everybody. Um, so when this started August 28th, and first off, let me say, this didn't happen over the summer. This problem didn't happen, and you're getting ready to see in these pictures. This didn't happen over the summer, okay? The magnitude of this, so the... Alamance Burlington School District signed my contract Monday, August 28th at 7 o'clock at night. At 7.30, we were rolling semis here, okay? Through midnight or through Monday morning, the 11th, we have over 170,000, thousand personnel hours on this project. Over 36 semis deployed here. Almost 3,000 pieces of equipment, okay? Over 108 dumpsters pulled out of these schools. Okay, let me put that in perspective. If you dump these end-to-end, -end, it's the equivalent of over 16 football fields long. Okay? Now, a lot of people don't realize that. Now, if you think a football field, and you line 16 of them up, and you dump these 108 dumpsters right in a row, it's over 16 football fields long, okay? <clears throat> we cleaned 16 HVAC systems, 13 I'm fully, the whole school, three I'm partial. You were asking about filters, the board's asking about filters. Just in the schools we cleaned, there was over 750 filters replaced. Now you think about your home. You got one filter, maybe two filters, you change it every quarter. Some of these schools got 90 filters in them. If we can get, actually, if you just want to roll, we, we, actually, there's some pictures here I'll show you. So this is what the underside of a table looks like in one of the schools, okay? All right, this, is, this, is, this didn't come from over the summer. I hate to tell you, this didn't come from over the summer. That's another school with another table. Okay? And, and there's... Some HVAC photos in here. This is under an elementary school table. Wow. Okay? Oh. That's a different school. So if you notice, it grows inside of cabinets and stuff. All right, so this is the chalkboard that was at Williams High School. Every chalkboard downstairs was just like this. And that, by the way, that chalkboard is asbestos. That's why it had to be done on asbestos protocol. So that's why every chalkboard had to be... This is in a music department in the elementary school, okay? They're in the dumpster, they're in the landfill, okay? This is actually a bathroom in a high school, okay? This is from the HVAC. So that ceiling tile right there, so when you see a water stain, right, that's the top side, that's the mold on the top side of it, okay? By the way, we replaced over 7,150 ceiling tiles. 
okay? This is actually in, in a cabinet in the library. Um, this is HVAC, stop right here. So this is a HVAC system, okay? Now, what would we do if our house looked like this? Okay? This is what happens when filters don't get changed, okay? And we go to the next one. This is what diffusers look like when we took them out. What's that? That's a diffuser. That's a vent. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Gotcha. So this is the track. This is the inside of it. Okay. All right. Go to this is actually that. That yes. This is turn time. I am actually shocked that this system didn't catch on fire. Okay. If you go to the next slide, we raked it out when we took the covers off. I don't know when that school was built, but I don't think it's ever, the covers have ever been taken off. Okay? This is actually a rester from a HVAC that actually has, okay? This is actually the inside of a galvanized unit of a plenum system. There's where a filter goes. <clears throat> that right there is actually a full-blown ductwork, and that's how, that's what it looks like. That's another school with a plenum. That's one of the team members scraping out the AHU units, the air handling units. There was so much debris in it, they scrape it out with a shovel. That's actually the unit at turn time. That's actually the units. So I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but this didn't happen from the summertime. This has been going on. And how to, and, and you know, when you look at it and you say, okay, well, how is the ceiling tiles? When you look at these schools, that are missing, you know, six, seven hundred ceiling tiles that are wet. On Saturday evening, when we experienced this bad rainstorm here, guess what my team had to stop doing? They had to stop cleaning. Guess what they had to do? Strike water, suck water, Southern High School, Western, Eastern, East Lawn. I mean, uh, uh, East Lawn, yeah, it's running. That's the one we're upside to. I mean, the water's running in the building. Guess what we had to do on Sunday when it rained? Same thing. Graham High School, we're in Graham High School having to remove boards per the industrial hygienics protocol, and it's literally raining in the building. Raining, not like drip, drip, like raining. Multiple classrooms, okay? And so we have to stop remediating to get the water out of the building. Then we turn right around and start back. Monday morning, Eastern High School, I have a team of folks, and guess what they're doing there? cleaning up ceiling tiles that fell in from the rain before the students get there. We're cleaning up ceiling tiles that we just replaced, okay? So I understand how HVAC doesn't help. I can tell you, I don't know what school you were in, but I can tell you, I was in a bunch of schools. You can go down a hallway, and if there's 10 classrooms, six of them are cool, four of them are 85 degrees. And it something's not balanced, okay? Something... The preventive, something's not balanced, and it won't work. And so, you know, but when you look at that, it's just, it, it's tough, okay? The, the amount of money y'all spent, and here's the thing. So <clears throat> there's actually 13 schools, I'm sorry, uh, 12 schools that we only done a partial one, okay? We didn't clean the whole school. We didn't remediate the whole school. No different if you go to the doctor and you're, Got, you know, shoulder hurt, they don't give an MRI of your whole body, they fix your shoulder. If you go into surgery, they fix your shoulder. Well, we were directed by the industrial hygienist that we needed to do these four areas. Well, that's the only areas we've done. So the rest of the school, if it was dirty or dusty, when they come back in Monday, it's dirty and dusty. It wasn't, but it did, you know, the, the industrial hygienist didn't find any mold, right? So that's why you hear people say, well, the whole school was clean, because we weren't directed. We only done what was affected, okay? Second thing is we're already having today, today, we've got schools already calling that's got mold coming back that's got dehumidification, but it needs to be in more areas because the roofs are leaking. So, you know, I, I just, I, I hate to, to say it, and actually I, I will say that I don't know anything about DPI as far as their policies, but I can tell you the third largest roofing company in the United States is, list, is located in Raleigh. 
Matter of fact, he graduated <coughs> from Wake Forest University. He's probably, you may have went to school with him. Prentice Baker. Okay, he owns Baker Roofing. They do Vanderbilt. They do, I mean, they work in 20-some states. Uh, they I did get, Cummins and Broadview. Oh, did they? They were excellent. Hamlin's another one. Huge. But, I mean, the amount of stuff that Prentice Baker's team does they can engineer it, warranty it, and everything, and probably have your estimate in a week and do it. I mean, so I agree. The longer you wait, the seven, eight months on engineering and all that, I mean, the way I look at it is if your personal house had a hole in it and it <laughs> leaked in your bedroom, I don't think you would wait to call somebody, wait for an engineer to come out, wait for an inspector to come out, then get the engineer to draw it, then get, now it's leaking the whole time, and wait, and it leaks for seven, eight months, and then you call a contractor when you decide which one you're going to use, and they say, well, Commissioner, I, I got to order the materials. It's going to be three or four more months. And then, oh, by the way, then when I, we wouldn't do it in our personal homes, right? So I, I'm just saying that the, 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 the thought that this come from just turning HVAC off this summer is not out. Now, did I tell you did it, did it, it didn't help it? No. But some of this stuff's been here for a long time. Well, we were told that it happened year after year after year. <coughs> oh, I'm sure it did. But, 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 the, but what I'm saying is, and that's the other thing is, is that I just made a note. I had the roofing thing. And then the other one is that mold doesn't happen in the winter. It takes three things to grow mold. Temperature, moisture, food source. Mm -hmm. It grows in the winter, too. And here's the thing, somebody brought up about windows, I think that was Commissioner Turner. Well, that's spot on, because you go to a school that's got a single pane, even in the winter. You got heat and cold, it'll create moisture. And the summer works the same way, okay? Also in the winter, guess what the human body puts off? Works the same way. So I agree as you're actually in a point, and I think I kind of related this the last time. You know, this was a plane crash and you had to triage all the people to see what they had. So now we've got the people s stable, but now it's time for the people to get, you know, burn grafts and, 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 and elective surgeries and stuff like that. Because if not, I don't know that you can sustain going down the road you're going. Or the Let school district. Let me ask district. you this question. Yes, sir. We know we have to repair roofs. Yes, sir. We've identified that. Yes, sir. We know we have to uh, take care of the HVAC. Beyond that, what oper if you were the operations manager, how would you make changes? What are you recommending that we do? So you got the roofs, you got the HVAC. The next thing is, is that action, there's got to be some urgency to it. And here's, I'm going to speak on that two ways. It takes two things to have urgency. Either money or people. But guess what? They all come back to money. You either got to have the workforce that can go do it, or you got to have a contract with somebody that can come fix it, right? Them taking it and having the urgency to get that information to somebody doesn't really work if they ain't got nobody to send it to. What about lack of maintenance and cleanliness? Well, but cleanliness, here's the thing is, is that you, it's the old saying, you get what you pay for, right? You could get somebody to clean your house for $20, but they're only going to sweep the floor and maybe take out the trash, all right? But if you pay somebody to spring clean it and they wipe the baseboards and do all that, you're not going to get that for $20. That is the thing is, the second piece is this preventive maintenance. Just take HVAC, changing filters. There's a lot of counties in the state, school systems, that change filters four times a year, every quarter. Do you know what it would take to change almost 2,000 filters every quarter? Mr. Lot, Mr. Hook could take his than, whole staff and yeah, couldn't do it in. A in, lot less than twenty million dollars. Well, but that's yeah, preventative maintenance stuff. Somebody's got to pay. You, you see what I'm saying? His whole staff couldn't do that. I mean, so that's the point is, is that that, and then also somebody in, in preventative maintenance on the HVAC units, because unfortunately, it's reactive now. We wait till it breaks and then we'll worry about fixing it instead of are the belts tight. Is the freon levels right? Is the chiller's maintenance? There's a lot of maintenance, no different than your car. If you don't change the oil in your car, how long is it going to run before you have a problem? I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be combative. I'm just being honest that it takes money. 
And, and to do that, but the preventative maintenance is a big deal. It, it's huge. And it's on everything. And when you have a wet ceiling tile, it's a leak from somewhere. You see, it, it may not be from a roof. It could be from a pipe. It could be from a pipe. It could be from a chiller line. It could be from an HVAC, you know, air handling unit has a pan that's got something in it. Mm -hmm. It could be from a multitude. And just because you see the leak here doesn't mean that's where it comes from because water travels by the path of least resistance. So it, it could be over there. I mean, luckily, Mr. Hook's team, the, the auditorium flooded at Southern this weekend. Okay? Well, luckily, we were there. Okay? Well, guess what happened again yesterday and today? Or yesterday, it built up. Well, when they found it, it, a wind storm had blew one of the big vents off, and it leaked right in it. Okay? And, the, and, and you know, so we, and I don't think it's just to this county, okay? So I don't think it's just to this county. A lot of times, we let things go. Into, I mean, you look at some of the roofs at, like, Southern High School. I mean, I don't know how that roof's got to be. I mean, there's part of it that's new, but I took some aerial video. I mean, part of it looks worse than Interstate I-95 I from the top. I mean, it's got so many patches and stuff, and it's war. I mean, that roof's got to be 30 years old. Eastern's the same way. Graham, I mean, the ceiling tile counts at some of these places. You know, like Graham Middle School, Graham High School, Western Alamance, Williams High, Hall River, Hillcrest, Southern, Broadview, Eastern, uh, Everett Jordan, and Cummins, they're in the top 11. I mean, there, there's a big difference after you go past them. You know, so, but when you look at it and you look at some of these, you know, problems, it comes down to you got to have staff to do it or you got to have service contracts and you got to hold them to it. We work with a lot of school systems that have HVAC service contracts, and they, I mean, they, they have somebody in the management. They change filters every quarter. They do preventative maintenance. You know, they check levels. They do the chillers. They do the boilers. We work with some other ones that have roofing, big roofing companies. You know, this ain't a guy in a truck. This is big, big roofing companies that can come out. I mean, like, they have less than 12-hour turnaround, 18-hour turnaround. You call them, your, your building's leaking. They're, they're on the way. They're fixing it that night. They have light time. I mean, it's a big difference. But at the end of the day, guess what that has associated with it? A cost. But I can tell you, in the long run, I always remember, I always tell clients this, you have two things. You have price and you have cost. Price is what you pay today. Cost is what you pay over time. And unfortunately, it caught up. So, but any other questions? I'll be glad to answer. Uh, i got a couple of questions for you, okay. Mr. Bass. Yes. Um, can we, like tomorrow, reach out to Baker? Absolutely. And Hamill. Hamlin, you said? Hamlin. Hamlin Roofing. They're not, they're, 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 they're kind of big. I mean, they're big. I mean, they're, but they're probably not on the same. I mean, Prentice, uh, Baker Roofing is one of the third largest roofing companies in the United States. I mean, like, they deal directly with the factory. That's how they set their prices by the year. So when they pick it up at a distributor, they, don't, they just use them as a delivery source. And they're headquartered right in Raleigh, right, up, right by the farmer's market. And like I said, um, if you look at all the universities around in multitude of states, Baker Roof is the one who's done it. And they'll, they can engineer it, do it, stamp it, warranty it, everything. And you mentioned something in that same sentence that they could do all this and give you a quote and inside a week. Oh, yeah. They can. Oh, yeah. They, these guys are, I mean, but you're dealing on a different level. Sure. I mean, they, but I, like I said, I don't know the DPI rules, and so I'm not, I don't know any of that stuff. But I'm just telling you, there's people out there that can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And, look, they do it. I mean, like I said, they they done Belmont and Vanderbilt in the same time, okay. university. I mean, they, they do a lot of big, big, big complex stuff. Maybe that's who we should reach out to. You could get a response. They, they answer the phones, and, I mean, like I said, they, they, I mean, they've been in business for over 100 years. There's a reason why. Yeah. I mean, so... Um, and look, there's HVAC companies out there like that too. Yes. I mean, they, they are. There's some big ones here in the state that, that actually can come in. And I mean, look, you, I don't know how many square footage the county has, but the school system's got over three and a half million square foot. I mean, think what it takes as a homeowner to manage a thousand or fifteen hundred or two thousand. Imagine three and a half million square foot. 
And look, some of the buildings are beautiful, but they are old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they, they are. I mean, some built in the 50s and 60s and still have single pane windows and stuff. And earlier. Well, it's, I thought Williams was the highest. I, I, uh, oldest. Mm -hmm. oldest. Is it? Yes. Well, Turntown's not far behind it. Yeah. Silvan is 1927. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, uh, I heard about uh, Williams, the Elvis play there, so I, I figured I would. And actually, honestly, I think my mom went to that concert. Honestly, I did. And uh, so, but yeah, I mean, but you got some of these buildings. I mean, I went to Elon. Man, that school was gorgeous. Yeah. I met the principal over there. That school was gorgeous. I mean, look, there's a lot of schools, and I, and I agree with, you know, Commissioner Thompson about the paint. You go in some of these schools that have been painted in the last year, I mean, they, they don't look bad. No. They but don't. isn't it also true that during your uh, going through Williams High School, we found some instances of uh, where the, the roof wasn't or the water coming in wasn't taken care of, it was just painted over, which is food for mold? Absolutely. And, a, and it wasn't yeah. just Williams. I know. And I was on a lot of buildings. And, and that is mm -hmm. like putting a Band-Aid on something. It, it absolutely, it, it in the, way I, the best way I can explain it is if you go and you have a EKG and they figure out you got two blockages and they just put a Band-Aid on your chest and say, good luck. <laughs> I mean, literally, that's what it is. It, it doesn't get any better. It gets worse. Yes. I mean, some of them pictures you saw were from Williams High School. Yeah. I, I mean, so, it, it. but there was a lot of other schools that have a problem, you know, and... You know, that it's just painted over or sealed over, and it, it comes back. Sure. I mean, because if you don't fix it, you know, it doesn't. I mean, I, I, unfortunately, I don't. I mean, I think one that y'all guys are in a good place now that you've got schools that have been, you know, cleared from the lab. Unfortunately, you're in a catch 22, I think, tonight, figuring out having somebody to do it all. I'm just, I don't know, like I said, the good thing is I don't deal with statutes and stuff like Ms. York and y'all do, but I can tell you, I don't know that I'd be waiting three months. No way. I don't know if I'd be waiting three weeks. When I tell you these buildings are leaking, I'm not talking about a little drip drip here now. We're talking, they'll fill up a 44 gallon trash can in less than an hour. They're leaking that bad in certain places. So I don't know that I'd be, I'd be on the phone within the next day finding somebody to come out here. I mean, and some of these guys are big enough, they, they can have PMs to walk these roofs, to, you know, within two days or whatever. I mean, they're, you know, they'll drone shoot them, you know, satellite shoot them, and all of that. This is a serious crisis. It is. It, I mean, it really, really is. And, 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 and like I said, I don't like to, I mean, I told uh, some of y'all before, if you just, I mean, I just going to tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, my old man's a retired state trooper, and that's all I've ever heard of my whole life. But I can just tell you, time ain't on your side if y'all keep waiting. Yeah. I can tell you that. You're going to be in some, I mean, you may be in this shape because, honestly, renting dehumidifiers month after month after month after month after <laughs> month after month, year after year after year after year, is honestly wasting money. Yeah. Now, maybe in your time frame, you buy them. Maybe that's the deal. And then you can use it for three or four years and then sell them on govdeals.com. I mean, the counties do that stuff all the time and recoup some of your money. That's, that may be an option for you, right? But I can tell you renting a month after month for, you know, through the first week of November and then turn right around. Unfortunately, I, I have a difference of opinion just because I'm in this industry. I don't know that June's your time frame. You're about first of April putting these dehumidifiers back. So now you got April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So now you got seven months. You only run them not five. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm just looking at costs. Yeah, it's one big investment up front, but then you own them, you use them for until you fix all the stuff, and then sell them. You recoup some of your money back, you know. So that's just. And then if Mr. Hook's department can figure out, you know, how to drain them so they don't have the trash cans, and I look. The trash can, the water collection devices are not the best thing in the world, but I can promise you, you'd rather have the water in them than you had in the building and in the services, because if not, all you got to look at the pictures and you can see where it goes. Because it's pulling that much water in them buildings. Well, the school system continues to not change filters, not to clean, not to, they're going to have, we're going to be back here again next year. So, so the only thing I would, I, I would agree, Mr. Pays, the only thing, Chairman Pays, the only thing I would ask you is that, 
how many people does it take to change 2,000 filters? I don't know, but I don't think you have... My house, I change filters every quarter. Yeah, but you only have two filters, filter. not 2,000. Right. You have two filters, not 2,000. I'm just saying it takes people and it takes, it takes either contracts or people. And unfortunately, I'm not here to defend one side or the other. I'm just telling you, I know what it takes in these buildings, okay? When I'm running over 600-some duct cleaning and HVAC guys, and it's taking them three, four days to clean the school because they're that bad, I mean, there's a problem. I mean, and it's got 90 filters in the school. How long would it take to change 90 filters? I mean, if four I, people. If I'm outsourcing all these jobs, maintenance, whatever, and they aren't changing filters as part of that, I'm going to replace them. Yeah, but that's not part of the contract. I think is what he well, said. Well, it needs to be. Well, here's the thing. So do you want a generalist to do something, a handyman, or do you want a specialist? I'd want an HVAC guy to do mine. I'm just telling you, on my on my commercial buildings, I'm not going to have a janitorial service working on my HVAC well, and preventing my, and changing filters. No argument with that whatsoever. Well, so they're two separate things. So somebody that sweeps the floor and mops the floor and carries out the trash and cleans the bathroom is one skill set, right? I want somebody to do my PMs every quarter. I want them to make sure my belts are tight, yeah. make sure my level. So the contract piece is two separate things. Okay, so it's two separate contracts, two separate people. It's just like you know. But they're they're doing maintenance outsourcing and they're doing HVAC outsourcing and what a, I, don't I, work, I think I don't we need work. to start looking at not we but the school board members in this room need to start looking at who's doing the outsourcing who's who's actually doing the work yeah I, I don't if know not I don't doing know. it they need to be replaced you don't go month after month or year after year and not change filters just one example yeah I understand and I, I HVAC, you, and conduits with those kind of... Oh, that's pictures. just a small portion of the picture. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I that mean, should never happen. But, you know, so here's the thing is, though, if you take it and the filters are changed, they don't look like that, right? Yeah, they get a little dirty. But over 20, 30 years, I mean, honestly, nobody up here had y'all's ducts clean last year in your house or the year before or whatever. But if you change the filters, you don't have that problem, right? Mm -hmm. But to, to Mr. Hook's point... They have so many different variations. It's either in the classroom or in the ACH or in this. And, you know, I agree. Should they know where they all are? Yeah, but guess what? That takes time for somebody to put that in there. And I, unfortunately, and, and you know, I, I guess it's difference of actually doing it in concept. So it's easy to do it once you've done it one time, but I don't think that nobody's ever took the time to do it per school on a layout with a Visio drawing to say, here's all the filters, right? Yeah, that takes time. Not? That's their job. Well, I, I can't answer that. I just, if you, you mean, but if they got five other HVA, if that HVAC system is broke at the school that Commissioner Carter was at, so they just continue to map where that's at or go fix that system. They put a filter in it if it needs a filter more than once every X number of years. Yeah, I don't know if it's years or months. I don't know. Well, I just, uh, thank you. Yep. I knew that you would be serious reality, and sometimes we all need to hear that. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't have any great news, Greg. Quickly, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Bass, do you have an opinion about whether commercial dehumidifiers are available in the market for purchase? Um, as a normal, at this time of year, no. I mean, the, the largest manufacturers, but some of the big, big guys, but the quantity y'all need or the school system needs, most people won't have. But there's a I mean, there's a good chance that that you could piece them out over through the year, you know, through a year or whatever. But the sheer amount that you need, I mean, it's not 10 or 12 or 15. Or, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that you need. So, but to answer your question, if you call somebody right now, it'd be 14, 18 weeks before you could receive them. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Nothing. <laughs> I know Corey Bryant told me he had over 100 at Williams. Uh, we, Williams has 119. Yeah. Yes. And it, and, and it, uh, they do the cafeteria um, and, and, um, twice a day. They do other areas twice a day. And, I mean, the cafeteria, it'll fill that 44-gallon trash can up in a day. Yeah. That's how much water it pulls out. And down the hallways and stuff. But that one there is pretty – that one, that school's not bad as far as layout just because – they're all in the hallway. They close the doors for class. 
end of the day, they leave all the doors open yeah. and it circulates the air. But, you know, I, I get it. Pumping out them trash cans and 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 doing that's not not fun. No, but when you get four gallon trash cans, not light when it's full of water. That's right, and so that and that's what I explained to some of them. You could just take, I mean, literally, you got some of them that'll have this much water in a day. And you just scoop it out. You have to pick it up. Um, I wouldn't let them get over half full because I mean, at eight eight, you know, eight pounds a gallon, they get heavy. You know, so they can just scoop it out. But it's just unfortunately. I think everybody needs to realize that you're not, nobody's in a great place yet. And until y'all do this study, um, I just, I, if it was my money, I wouldn't wait on the study. I would call a roofing company tomorrow and have some boots on the ground to be fixing some roofs. At least temporary patch them or something, you know, not let them keep leaking like this. You know, so. Thank you, Mr. Bass. Okay. We appreciate it. Just so the board is aware, uh, I know Mr. Bass, I don't want to take over your presentation, but I know Mr. Bass indicated before he doesn't do statutes and stuff, but um, I do think that there is a possibility here, when we talked about an RFQ and putting one out, um, depending on the board's position on whether or not this is a case for a special emergency involving the health and safety of the people or their property, there could be an exemption from the RFQ process. Now, there's no specific limit on how long the RFQ has to be outstanding before we can start to vet it. So we might not be saving a lot of time by doing things that way. We also stand to gain inquiries from interested bidders by doing the RFQ process. So I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, but at the same time, I think that exemption may exist in this circumstance. Okay. I'm going to ask, and, I, and I'm going to apologize for I ask this. We're at, already having commissioners asking for another recess, and we've got another presenter. So I'm going to ask you to kind of pull it together. Okay, absolutely. I just, you know, I, I think we've shared a lot this mor uh, this afternoon, say this morning, this evening. Can I say um, something full to you? Full day. I asked him to come up because I want everybody in this county who's watching or sitting in this building and us as well as everybody to understand what we're really facing with this school yes, system. This is not just a Band-Aid. This is a crisis, and we've got to treat it like it's one um, because we just have to. There, we No more excuses, no more he, she, whatever point, this, nothing. We're at a point now where we have got to go to work and be leaders, and I didn't do that to undermine you because I'm all about putting it out there. And I know you can handle it. And I just want everybody to know what the school system is really facing. We're all facing it. If you got a kid in the school or a teacher or anybody, they feed everything in this county. Our workforce, our everything. And they're that important. And I want them safe and I want them in school. So sometimes we just have to hear the hard things to get to where we need to be. Yes, ma'am. So thank you. Well, my, my closing comment, I guess I would say, you know, that we shared this in a, in a goal of trying to work together and, and look at possible solutions. Um, I feel like our, our school board has selected a superintendent that's focused on, on fixing issues, not hiding issues. And that's, you know, we're, that's what we're doing now is trying to, you know, as we've gone through this, identify areas that we need to do better in. Um, and that's his expectation of his staff. Um, but Dr. Butler is very focused on, you know, moving forward, being solution focused and, and getting things fixed so they're right for our staff and our students and our school buildings. Well, I've said this before. We're all in the same boat. I bet the ARC had mold. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 40 days, 40 nights. Maybe know. that's why they used acacia wood. I don't that's know. That's right. <laughs> quick, quick question while we're still on top. Do you plan to take a recess after... After this. It's been requested. I'm fine, but okay. Well, I'm, if there's a need, then I'm, yeah. I'm happy to oblige. But a uh, quick question, uh, Mr. Baker: uh, How soon could the county have an RFQ in the in the world in, out out in the? Yeah, we can get it done this week. Um, leave it open for two to three weeks. I mean, I'll tell you that I've already spoken with Baker Roofing, had a conversation. They can come to an assessment relatively quickly, relatively inexpensively. It's not an engineered process. So it's just you're, you're asking for two different things. We can have a roofing company come out, give us a quick assessment. They can tell you what you need to fix. If we're doing an RFQ, it's for an engineer to do a thorough assessment, HVAC and roofs, and prioritize those things. So they're just different things. And, and I think either one of them is 
acceptable in this situation. We can start the ball rolling. Well, work with me here. Can you, um, you can have an RFQ in the field in a week. Can the RFQ process, rather than lasting two to three weeks, to Mr. Stevens' point, last one week under this emergency process? Would we, is it possible to get, uh, is that sufficient notice for firms to say, you know, I want to participate in this? Do we give Rick a not? promotion? Mm -hmm. Do we give Rick a promotion? It's just we, a matter of who, who can respond and... We can pare down what we're asking for. Normally they send us a thick book talking about how great they are. So that takes more than a week probably for them to put together. We can pare down what that is and say we need this we don't, immediately. We don't need the book. What about this? Can we have an expedited process? Come together, get well at our next meeting in two weeks. If we don't have sufficient inquiries or bids, we, we, mm -hmm. we pull back and we expand and we expand the thing for the original two to three weeks. Is there any downside in that? I can certainly put a pair down RFQ together, make phone calls, and, and see if we can get some interest and, and put it out on the website. You know, it's public, obviously, um, okay. but we'll see if we can generate some interest. And the firms who w would want to do this, I think they know who they are. You know, they, they can do it. So we can try. Now, is it possible in addition to that? That's the RFQ for the engineering process. Is it possible under that same scenario to have a second RFQ? that is a roof analysis under an expedited procedure that does not involve engineering, but involves a, hey, this is what you need right now, as a separate, completely different process? Sure. I don't know that we're going to need an RFQ for that. We'll have to think about what the dollar figures are going to be. Um, so we might be able to get away without an RFQ for that. So um, we could have an RFQ process under the expedited procedure and the non-RFQ process both of which we can determine in our next meeting how successful they are and determine which way we can go with a vote. Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can get some options. I can at least give you prices and timelines for those two. So a roofing specialist versus an engineer, I can have those choices available to you. I don't know what kind of responses we'll get from the RFQ, but we can certainly have some information to put you in a better spot than you are today. And if we have the Baker, not the Baker, but if we have the, the non-RFQ process for just the quick roof analysis, at our next meeting, is it possible to engage with ABSS to assess whether they need a truly engineered process for these three roofs that we just talked about earlier in the meeting, or whether the expedited process works better for those things? Is it possible to have that dialogue in two weeks? Possible to have that dialogue in ten minutes. Sure. <laughs> say ten minutes. You I mean, go, Brian. You take a break. I'll just walk out there. That way we have all we have all the options available to us in two weeks, hopefully. And if we don't, then we we know why we don't, and then we can have a discussion again two weeks later. Sure. I think we as a board are requesting that that be done. Am do we need, do we need a vote on that? Do we need to vote? Do I we don't need think to, so. I think we've received your direction and we'll bring back as much as we can at your next meeting. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we need a motion. I don't think we're going to have anybody disagree on this. I, I think one thing that might be helpful to me in, in thinking about whether or not we need an RFQ for any part of this process, um, there's not, from what I'm finding, a strict standard as to how the special emergency involving the health and safety of the people or their property is assessed. But if the board were to find and make a motion and find by vote that that condition exists here, and that would certainly give a lot of weight to our decision not to use an RFQ as part of the process for soliciting. So, but the board, we could do that in two weeks. Well, it'd be helpful no. if it happened now in order to give us that top cover for not having done right. the process in the more formal way. To wait two weeks makes it look like it's not that important, right? right. Right, but but also if we're going to start soliciting these things immediately, it'd be nice to know what the board's position on that is now. So if the board thinks that this situation is such that it meets that special emergency exception, then if the board were to vote that and say affirmatively, yes, we believe that's the case here, that'd be helpful to us. But it does not commit us to a project or monies. I don't think it commits us to anything other than just the ability to pursue bids. Right through a non-RFQ process 
because that's the exception that exists in the statute. As our legal counsel, would you uh, help us put a motion together? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. So I think that um, if the motion were to consider uh, uh, soliciting work based on the exception in 143-64.31 uh, in instances mm -hmm. where there is a special emergency involving the health and safety of the people or their property and thereby eliminate the requirement for an RFQ process in certain instances, if the board feels that way and wants to vote that, then then that would be appropriate. Mr. Turner, are you making such a motion? So moved. I'll second. second. Oh. <laughs> okay, Pam, you've got the second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? All in favor, signify the vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. I think any opposed? Us... Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. you know. We can't be declared a disaster area, although we are. No. I mean, really, I'm trying my best to find somebody <laughs> under a rock to help this. Wait, so, right. We can't. I, I, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily where we are. Okay. But, okay. But this is going to help us be able to to substantiate the need. If someone questions it later, we'll say we analyzed it. The board approved it. Yes. Sir. All right. I've been threatened within an inch of my life that we will take a five minute break. So we're taking a five minute, and I'm looking at the clock, and I'm not moving. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, and I'd first like to start with thanking you for inviting me. It's, uh, I feel very privileged to have this opportunity. You hear nothing but demands for money, so I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to try to save you money and improve schools at the same time. Um, I've got a clicker here. Let's see if I know how to work it. Oh, my. Thank you again. Alamance County is different. Our local government actually is better than most. Um, our taxes are lower than the nearby counties. You, you guys, not you personally, but Bill's father, I think, was on the committee when you supported the River Mill Academy, mm -hmm. the Clover Garden Academy, and, and you guys definitely supported the Unity Global Academy, which unfortunately isn't going to happen. Uh, but there is a huge and growing problem, and nobody wants to talk about it. The ABSS schools are low performing and they're getting worse. And in spite of management changes, many new board members, four superintendents in five years, yet 10 year decline continues. Why does nothing change? And I think you know. The, what is going on in our schools, the, uh, let's see the things that are upsetting parents. Whole language reading instruction, common core, critical race theory, dirty books in the library, gender dysphoria, all of these things. Nobody in the community asked for that. It's coming from somewhere else, and it's happening across the entire country. And parents are fed up, and they're, they're jumping ship, as you will see when I show you the numbers. And these numbers may not be familiar to everybody. Um, that's the ABSS ranking. Uh, in North Carolina, and you see we started up at about 130, and we're now down to 225. And we managed that decline in um, about 10 years. Now that ranking is done by the public, uh, a New York outfit called Public Schools Review. You may not like that, so I'll show you some other information which is generated in North Carolina. Now is that a, is the baseline here North Carolina schools? This is, this is the overall ranking of Alamance Burlington schools versus all the school districts in North Carolina, North Carolina. of which there are 321. And I think you, you will be familiar that there's 119 county type, county and city school districts, and another 208 which are charter schools. So charter schools count as a school district in North Carolina. That's the way the law is written. So, you may not like their methodology, but there is confirmation from other sources. Um, <clears throat> this is, okay. Now, when we have problems, and not every organization is going to have problems. I, I can't blame the Alamance Burlington schools for having problems, but it's what, how they solve the problems that matters. So 
we get a problem with mould, give us 20 million up front and another 47 million per year, and the mould won't come back. Great. Declining performance, academic performance, we want more money. We've got eight F schools today, we only had two in 2018. So I hope you don't ask them to fix that problem because the, the price tag will be beyond any imagining. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to fix it. We deserve better. I'm speaking from the taxpayer point of view. All you ever hear is the ABSS point of view. It's time to listen to taxpayers. I, I, I think you, you do that, but you're not getting many people showing up here asking you to reduce spending, and I think there should be more. Now, you had people on the school board, on the radio, saying that the, the, all their problems come from the fact that they're underfunded. And that's utterly wrong. Take a look at the actual numbers. You've gone up by over 60% in the last six years. And the yellow line is the operating budget, and then if you add in the capital funding, you get the purple line at the top. So we're up with very close to 350 million annual spending. Because not all the money is coming from Alamance County, of course, a lot of it's coming from other sources. So I just hope, I, I really, it really upsets me when the school board starts talking about lack of funding as being the reason they're not, as, not improving. It just doesn't hold water. <clears throat> um, okay, I, I was talking about other sources of information on school performance, and this data comes from the Alamance News, and I'm not sure where they get it from, but probably from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. And this is showing graduation rates. This is SAT scores. This is, now, the other, other matter is capital spending. And this particular uh, slide shows the capital spending from July the 1st, 2018, through to June the 30th, 2022, one, 111 million. That is audited information. And then we had 168 million budgeted. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what the, the, the auditor's report is in, but it hasn't been made public. Uh, I think we've actually spent about 110 million on capital, but I, don't, I can't really confirm that. Um, what do we get for that? One new school and eight schools expanded. And during that period, the enrollment fell by 344. So at least our students are failing in better, in a less crowded classroom. Okay, contrast ch charter schools. June 2018 to 2023, zero dollars for capital spending. One new school, the Alamance Community School, three schools expanded. The latest expansion is in Pagetown Road. It cost $20 million, not a penny of it from the Alamance commissioners. So your taxes are not affected by new con construction of charter schools. And the enrollment, and it's not just charters, this is home schools, private schools, and charter schools, rose by 1,917 students, not a single dollar from, of capital spending from the commissioners. So how did the schools get built, private schools and charter schools? Well, private money, not tax money. And the maintenance was paid out of operating funds, as it should be. It's not a capital expense, at least not to most people. Okay, a better future. Rewarding failure makes things worse. So I recommend that you say no to the request for more money from, from the Alamance Burlington school systems. And they don't need more money, they need more competition. And here's just some ideas, and I, uh, I don't know if any of them will fly, but we, we need to look at them. Why not privatize building maintenance? I think I heard something like that. Uh, as a motion short, a short while ago, but maybe I was wrong. Uh, I think that would be worth looking at. Fund the maintenance out of operating budget. If charter schools can do it, why can't the Alamance Burlington system do it? Hmm? I'd, I'd think you ought to ask them. Could you ask the 
ABSS to fund its school out of the operating budget the way charter schools do, that's probably a bridge, bridge too far, but at least they should think about it. And if they don't want to do it, we can do it for them. Uh, I'd be happy to build three or four new schools and won't charge you a penny. Uh, um, but probably you'd be better off with a much larger organization, you know, like a charter management organization, because they'll have more resources than I have. <clears throat> Will we expand home schools? That's where most of the growth has come from, not charter schools, uh, home schools. Can we expand private schools? Um, probably. And then charter schools, well, they're not the force they used to be, but they're better, than, they, they do make a contribution. What did I do? I pressed the wrong button? Oh, no. I think I came to my last slide, did I? Maybe. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's the first slide. Obviously. Okay. Um, well, I want to end on thanking you. A lot of, we've got this year, we've got a tremendous amount of education reform, and some of it can be traced back to the chairman, John Paisley. He was at a meeting on October the 24th of last year, and he said, you know, the funding should follow the child. And he said, I'm going to talk to the legislative delegation. Well, what followed, I certainly didn't expect. I'm, I'm, maybe he expected it, I didn't. But we've got four major bills through the legislature. So now expanding charter schools is much easier than it was a year ago. So we need to explore how we can use those new pieces of legislation to create more school capacity and promote school choice. I mean, how can you have school choice if there's only, you know, you've, all you've got McDonald's, the, 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 the Wendy's didn't get built because McDonald's said no. <laughs> but we need to build alternative schools, other schools, home schools, charter schools, private schools. Now, I gave you a handout, which actually is a legal brief and I have no, this is lawyer stuff. I have no idea how much good this is going to do, but I'm asking you sincerely to set up a committee to look into it. And I would volunteer to serve, and I imagine a lot of other people would too. And by February of next year, we could deliver a report which could maybe save this county $100 million because we could provide school capacity for a lot less than the, the five-year plan you're going to get from the Alamance Burlington school system. And it would be, constitute real competition, and it would be doing things that we've already done before, but just expanding on them. Um, but one thing that isn't, not, that isn't on this, this list here, it doesn't mention House Bill 823. <laughs> all, of these, all of these bills help charter schools. The House Bill 823 offers $6,492 per student as opportunity scholarships, and of course that will make a huge difference to private schools. Now next year, I hope we are able to find ways to help homeschoolers, uh, <laughs> things like edu education savings account. Anyway, I thank you, Chairman, for, for starting a snowball down a hill that turned into an avalanche, and thank you. And thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? I think at this point uh, we go into closed session, do we not? Or we can go into uh, county attorneys and so forth. Reports. Which would you like to do first? Uh, Mr. Chair, I was just going to say I'll defer until after the manager presents and after the commissioners make comments that that'll help things along. Um, I have two closed sessions to move, and, and then after that, nothing. So if we want to go ahead and do the others first, that might be a good use of our time. No, I think that's a good move. Um, county attorney is waving for the county manager. County manager. 
I just That's why I was looking at it. <laughs> okay. Right. You said attorney, so I looked up. <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's right. laughs> I wanted to let you all know that we are meeting with the bond rating agencies next week um, to review our current bond rating and see if there's an opportunity for that to to change, and this is in preparation for the issuance of bonds at the end of October for Elements Community College. So we will let you know how those go. It's quite a process. We had a four-hour, approximately four-hour prep meeting today for that. Yeah, it's a lot. That's all I had. Thank still you. still on the clock. <laughs> We're still here. <laughs> What'd you do in your spare time? No, no. <laughs> yeah, anything else? No, nothing else. Thank yeah. you. Commissioners, comments. How are you? Okay, county attorney. Oh, all right. Um, so again, I've got two closed sessions to move. So the first is pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A4. I ask the board move into closed session to discuss matters relating to the location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body including agreement on a tentative list of economic development incentives that might be offered by the public body in negotiations. I further move that pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, I ask the board to move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will advise the board on ongoing legal matters, including NAACP at all the Alamance County at all. I anticipate no further action after closed sessions. I so move on both occasions. Second. Mm -hmm. so a motion, two seconds. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. We're in closed session now. Close our closed session in our closed session. Um, no action. Therefore, I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Hey, I'll suck it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to stay later? <laughs> I'm up till 4 a.m., so it doesn't matter. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Too tired. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.